Hello, everyone, and welcome to, uh, auspiciously, show number 300, uh, which makes us coming up onto our eighth year, actually, of doing this every week of Friday. Friday, Friday. Yeah, I'm, you know what? That's why I'm not going to talk much today. Already, I'm having problems with words. For that reason alone, I'm going to allow Ms. Adele Gutman to introduce our special guest co-host today, since she was instrumental in bringing Carrie with us. So, Ms. Adele, please, if you would do the kind honors. It would be my pleasure. I, I'm so happy to have you here today with us, Carrie L. Is the um, is it vice president of uh, of the hotel network? Is that I'm correct? Dr Director. <laughs> director. <laughs> director. What does that matter? Soon to be vice president. <laughs> I had the great pleasure of meeting Carrie. I think it was at an HSMA conference uh, in, in Canada. And I, I, it was so great to meet her. She was so informative and and uh, really understood my needs. And after we actually hired the hotel network, anytime I said, hey, Carrie, you know what we'd really like to know? You know what would be super helpful? A month or two later, she'd come back and say, hey, we made that for you and for everybody else too. So it's so great. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. I I'm hearing an echo. Are you hearing an echo? Nope. <laughs> okay. I'm hearing an echo as well. All right. I'm, I'm turning down my volume. It might be me. Try. Hold on. I might Is be this better? Is this better? Sounds uh -huh. good. To oh, oh, by the way, Carrie, may I introduce Tim Peter? Tim Peter, Carrie, Carrie, Tim Peter. Carrie yeah. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate that introduction. And oh. Yeah, oh, well, he might have had technical issues. Like I invited you here today because we were having such a great chat about a new free tool that you're bringing to the market to be helpful to people who, like me, have told you that we really need to know these things. And is there anything you can do to help us? And and it will be so great to hear about this free tool. Free forever, right? Free forever. That's it. Yeah, a lot of a lot of good has come out of the past year. I mean, depending on where you look. And uh, in our case, we just spent a lot of time with our clients, people like you who I've worked with for years, and just sort of rolled up our sleeves and said, "What can we do to help?" Number one, um, we focus on direct bookings as a business. By the way, just that bit of background. And number two. Um, you know, what can we create? You know, let's look at what does the industry need to thrive again? That's important clearly to everyone. And we just started asking a lot of questions, had a lot of conversations and understood that, you know, what hoteliers really needed was a way to sort of compare their own information. We're all good at looking at our own data to others, you know, understand, you know, what's happening outside of my bubble? What's happening in my destination? You know, what is an average length of stay? What should my conversion rate look like? I have no idea. Everything is different. And so that's where our complimentary benchmark platform came in. Yeah. And you also bring insights from the fact that you are a travel advisor yourself with the Virtuoso Agency, Smart Flyer, which is such a great agency. Yeah, and so that slowed down. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm an expert at really, really why why is that, Carrie? <laughs> <laughs> what, sorry. We're doing yeah, what we came out around there, yeah. Yeah, let me tell you. But uh, anyway. So I hope it's picking up though now. It Are is you your revenge yep. travel. Yeah, well, keep in mind, so I'm in Vancouver, British Columbia. I'm Canadian, and I have a lot of West Coast clients, but a lot of them in Canada. I do have some in the US, but certainly a lot of in Canada. Our vaccine situation is behind the US, right? So we mm -hmm. probably won't start getting our second vaccinations until June, July. And we've got a right now a four month gap between the first one and the second one. So mm -hmm. things are not really happening here, but mm -hmm. um, that's okay. We're still planning, <laughs> we're still dreaming and we're still booking things with flexible cancellation terms. That's happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not that the U.S. is in any way hoarding or containing large amounts of vaccinations and not distributing them anywhere outside of our boundaries or anything like that. Not that anything like that would be happening. <laughs> <laughs> and I hear the U.S., it, it, some of, some people aren't even showing up for their second vaccine. What is that that's, all That's about? just a fabricated <laughs> truth, okay? Yeah. <laughs> that's a Canadian. We'll take them. Uh, it's, I feel yeah. like it's like the big brother syndrome. You can't beat up my little brother, only I can. It's kind of like you can't have any vaccines and <laughs> vaccinations, even though I don't want them. It's, 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 yeah. But it, yeah. it is, yeah. Tim, 
<laughs> no, so Carrie, talk about Bench Direct. You know, when you talk yeah. about Bench Direct at the Hotels Network, you know, what is what are the benefits of Bench Direct? Why should hotels be looking at it? Yeah, so, um, well, other than it's fully complimentary, um, it gives a lot of insight into the direct channel. And um, we are firm believers in monitoring data. I mean, we do it all day long. But again, if you can look at some key pieces of information that are very relevant now. So again, as we start to look at recovery and borders do start to open up, if I'm you know, a Canadian hotel, I wanna know when the Americans start coming to visit me. And it's not enough just to know that, hey, we've got some US searches on the site or we're starting to convert in that market. We need to know what is happening amongst the other hotels in our destination? You know, we can match the star rating because we know that's important. You know, the five stars care less about what the three stars are doing and vice versa. And, and, and identify those trends. Look at the length of stay. You know, oh, great, your length of stay has increased. But what is the average for your destination right now? Maybe there's more you could be doing. Mm -hmm. Or you know what? Maybe you're killing it and keep doing what you're doing because you're doing very well. But benchmarking has never been more important, in my opinion, our opinion as a company. Are you looking only at hotels that you have some sort of a, a connection with? Or are you able to look past those, those borders? How many hotels do you work with? So there's 10,000 on the platform now. Um, and a big part of that is, you know, our client base uh, really we're keen to onboard. Um, by the way, onboarding is just a script. We load a script so you don't have to actually give us any information. We don't need access to your GA, Google Analytics. It's just a script. OK, and it's the same script that our clients have had on their websites previously to deploy very targeted personalized messaging, which we do and price comparison, some other things that our core business has. So that didn't change, which was nice. Um, and then of course, making this complimentary has meant that now we have a big waiting list. You know, we've got 350 booking engines we're already connected to. We can work with any booking engine, but some are, there's a lot of custom out there as you guys know. So we're just connecting to a lot of those right now so that we can accommodate this influx we've had of, of other brands wanting to take part. So the idea is, you know, there's room for everyone. You know, it's what we call the network effect where we all share our, if we do all share our information, by the way, all data in the platform is completely anonymous and grouped. So nobody knows who's they're looking at. That's really important. But again, if we share with the intention of becoming stronger as an industry and ultimately relying less on OTAs for business, I mean, I know there's a very important place for OTAs, so I'm not here to knock them, but if we've got people coming to our own websites, we need to put our best foot forward in terms of converting them, right? And so that is our mission and that is the vision behind this platform. So what's the percentage of um, data that you can now have access to versus just monitoring your own data from your website and booking engine? So you're able to compare yourself to, uh, well, first of all, your own brand, if you are part of a large brand, which we have a lot of clients who, who fall into that category, or um, your destination comp set that's going to be matched by star rating. And then we have what we call, um, you know, the THN network, the hotels network, that's us, where we have a minimum of 50 hotels that are lookalikes. So you can learn from hotels that aren't in your destination. You know, my resorts in, you know, Hawaii are competing with Mexico, for example. So if you can have, uh, uh, you know, learn something from a set of hotels that have, you know, your same star rating, number of rooms, average booking value, cater to the same audiences. And by the way, when our hotels on board, they share this information with us. So you don't have to worry about us matching you with hotels that are not like yours because you're just going to tell us, you know, which descriptions are relevant to your hotel and who do you cater to and, you know, star rating that comes from you. You know, it's an interesting point and I will admit this is a bugbear of mine for years. Uh, that when I work with clients, we talk about this a lot, is, you know, in your materials, it talks about the fact that you do some work with machine learning or things along those lines to understand, you know, who the real comp set is, right? Can you talk about that a bit? Because I think sometimes, I won't say I think sometimes, in my experience, we often see hotels say, well, my competitor is X, and yet what the customer is actually comparing the, com you know, the hotel to yeah, right. may not be the same thing. So could you talk a little bit about how you know, Bench Direct looks at that and how you think about that? Yeah, and that's a really good point. We talk a lot internally about redefining the comp set. 
because there are a lot of brands, as I think you, uh, you're sort of um, alluding to here, that are really fixated on the two hotels down the street, right? And although that, yeah, and and so that's important to a degree, but it's not everything, you know. So as as you're mentioning, you do need to be able to look at what others are doing, and there are all kinds of destinations that are open to your traveler, and that's why there are frankly is so much research happening, and you know we even. Um, we learned during the pandemic that there's, you know, two staycations. So because we have a targeting platform, you know, we can identify whether or not you've got a, a searcher who who is in your local, local neighborhood. You know, in other words, they can be at your property in 10 minutes or maybe they're driving for four hours to get to you. That's two different messages in our world, right? right? Because that person theoretically could be driving four hours in every direction. So you really have to promote your destination as a whole, right? So again... That is our view. Redefine the concept. Look at what others are doing, and and you don't necessarily have to know exactly who is in your destination concept if you can see, and if you know your match by star rating. But if you can see that, you know, for example, OTAs are undercutting your rate more than everyone else in your destination. That's I bring that up because that's been a big point of uh, interest for our folks. Oh, excuse now. me. I, I... Sorry, I sneezed there. <laughs> we wouldn't mention anyone by name here. Uh, <laughs> I should have checked in what I'm allowed to say here before I came on. <laughs> oh, yeah, it, it, oh, you yeah. can say anything you want. <laughs> you can say anything you want. It's, it's all good. We don't have sponsorships, corporate relationships, or any entitlement for anybody else at this point. This is all personal opinion from perspectives. That's it. There's and no... I'm genuinely sharing with you the concerns my clients have had this year. Right. You know, and it has been a genuine, a huge topic of conversation around, oh, this is just, it's just changed. This is, the undercutting's just gone through the roof. Is it just me, you know, or is this happening to everyone? So in order to answer those questions, you need to have the ability to benchmark. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to ask, um, what are the most common flaws or pain points that this kind of benchmarking has been able to point out for the hoteliers that have uh, onboarded already. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very interested to see, is it is it all about speed or what is it? It's a lot to do with conversion. And one uh, big gap that I know has been recognized by a lot of my clients is their ability to convert on mobile. Right, so we can we can slice and dice data on this platform. We've got multiple filters. We know if somebody's on mobile or if they're not on mobile. So there are a lot of people that think they're doing well in terms of converting on mobile, but there's a lot they could be doing a lot better. So, <laughs> oh, Carrie, it'd be rude of me to, to introduce those that have joined us since we made introductions last. Uh, Mr. Dean Schmidt with Basecamp Meta Meta Search Marketing, and Ms. Tammy Carlisle, who is wow it's so good you're in your new home <laughs> anyway. i was gonna say <laughs> screen background. On internet and then dan waxman who is in hawaii desperately trying to get his camera to work oh, uh, <laughs> hey, dan. But, uh, yeah he might be joining us uh, from cecilio i think well, if anything we get him on audio oh. hey how you guys doing hey, hey dan. Hi, dan hi dan aloha aloha I to hop in for the you. show <laughs> Oh, yeah, it has been. Gosh, golly. It's nice to see you. And then Tammy as well. Well, everybody, it's always nice to see everybody. And thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, Carrie, meet Dan. Dan, Carrie. Um, I know Dan. And kind Gary. of in the same, well, I wouldn't say the Dan same time zone. Like yeah. <laughs> Dan, Dan's, Dan's Mr. Hawaii. I mean, if they had a TV show, Hawaii 5 would be Hawaii Dano, you know, because <laughs> welcome Dan. Anyway, just it's, I like picking on Dan. <laughs> welcome Dan. You went there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'll be working on my camera in the background. You know, I'll try to get live soon. No worries. By the way, my audio is fine as well. Good as well. The, the real point there, Lauren, is if Dan was on Hawaii 5 0, it'd be booked them wacko. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That, yes. Okay. You up me on that one. Okay. So I, I have what kind of data? This is the, the geeky side of me. When it comes to your script coding, and you're yeah. pulling data. I'm a huge attribution theft issue person. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and when it comes to the data, when you, you say script and loading it in, 
a lot of, of uh, platforms other than yours, but I know of other platforms that, that will grab a lot of data because they can, because it's a generalized script, all data, all data fields, they'll scrape any data fields available and so forth. Is there specific data points that your script is pulling, but not pulling everything? Or is it really trying to say, we'll take everything and we'll tell you what we know about what we're, what we're, what we're pulling? How does, it, how does it look at the data that it's pulling from a perspective of what they pull? Yeah. Um, we're pulling very limited data, but it's surprising okay. what you can learn if you know what to look for with limited data. So I can tell you, for example, clearly through IP is where we understand geography. Through dynamic linking, if we're working with the partner on that, we can know if it's you know someone coming from their meta search campaign or their social media campaign. And everything else is either simply behavioral. What do your search dates tell us? Do you have children in the search? If so, we know you have a child, therefore it's family. Mm -hmm. um, did you... Con con uh, confirm your booking or not. That's it. And there's nothing beyond that. There's nothing personal. We don't know anything about anyone. We're very focused on compliance and security. And believe me, we've had to jump through hoops to partner with some of the booking engines we have partnerships with, um, as well as some of the large brands. So we're, uh, we're well versed in that side of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so helpful to know what didn't convert. You know, is it is it um, that they were asking for two parents, two adults and two children, and you just didn't have the availability for that? Or was it because of a minimum stay restriction you put in? Or, you know, it could be so many different things that you think are uh, restrictions that are not harming you, and it really brings things to light. You know, that maybe the policies you had that were for you in the past don't work any longer. Yeah, I think what we really learned this year was that we've always, personalization Personalization has always been a priority for us, but really taking it to a whole other degree of trying to connect with your visitors. You know, hospitality has always been personal. If somebody walks in our lobby, we will bend over backwards to make sure that, you know, that they have everything they need from us, and et cetera, et cetera. A, a lot of hotels haven't really gone to that level on their website. And I'm not talking about popping up a whole bunch of things that are going to scare people away. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about tasteful and tactful, personalized content that's going to resonate with people. And, you know, in this day and age, reassure them that you are the right place to book, that you are going to provide, you know, the safe experience the clean experience, you know, whatever it may be. So there are ways that you can communicate everything that your visitor is looking for before confirming that booking with you that will also eliminate reasons they may have for leaving your website. You don't want them to go anywhere else. I feel we're at a kind of a crossroads of two things that are very deep conversations. One is the ability of technology to help support the deficiencies in our service profiles of hotels at this particular moment and the need to up our game uh, in an accelerated way as to what technology can help make sure that the guest is aware of when it comes to expectations or whatever, or means of communication or whatever we want to think technology can help us with. And the other is the looming change in how our technology is being used when it comes to, like we talked about earlier, Carrie, before we jumped down on this with 14.5 iOS, the leading of that, that segmentation that it's creating where you're having to uh, allow for certain permissions to be given for certain things and functions to operate and whether that delimitation of personalization for a bit, lack of a better clarification to it is going to supersede our ability to actually be effectively helpful because some people are simply going to choose I don't want to do this with you so you're just going to have to be general about your dialogue with me so that's the kind of the two things that we could or there's a Tim you got another one we can throw another one in there <laughs> I think there's so much data that we already have access to. And I mean, Carrie, it, you know, you, you work for a company that does personalization. I consult with a company that does personalization. So I've got a point of view on this outside the hospitality industry in that specific case. Um, but, you know, there's so much data that we have access to today that we don't take advantage of already that I, you know, when people say we can't get access to this data that's going to hurt our ability to do personalization, I just think we're thinking about it all wrong. We can do so much with the data. I don't need to know, Laura, that you are an X year old, you know, guy who does this or whatever to provide the right answers to the questions you're asking in the moment 
your browsing behavior, your clicks, your searches that you conduct, things along those lines where you're actually asking a question of the website or telling me a ton about what matters to you in the moment. And that's the data we really should be paying the most attention to because it speaks to your behaviors right now and what matters to you right now. And there's a lot of good work being done in this area. And there's a lot of people who are crying, you know, crying wolf or crying foul because, you know, the ad economy depends upon it, but not necessarily the customer experience uh, or customer behavior end of this. And that's, it's just, you know, two different people crossing crossing streams as it were, or, you know, ships crossing in the middle of the night where they're not getting at that. I mean, Carrie, you, you have a personalization platform. You probably have a point of view on this. I'd love to hear what that is. Well, well we often say internally that we also have to be our client's imagination, right? Because it's one thing to have all these tools that can do all these things, but, you know, imagination is, you know, something that we can, you know, inspire in our clients. So we do spend a lot of time Adele knows we would have a lot of meetings about, hey, let's try this new thing. Or as she said earlier, we just built this new thing, but how can it apply to your business? And so um, throughout the pandemic, clearly we were dealing with, you know, skeleton crews, right? So we rolled up our sleeves and said, how can we help? So, you know, I was sending a deck out um, every month, every two months, maybe depending on uh, the time of year, but just trying to inspire ideas. Okay, here's something that we're doing, you know, in Europe, we're going to start because everything sort of happened sooner in Europe than it did in North America, where I'm focused. So we already know this works. So let's try it over here. Uh, Black Friday was a really good example where we just said, hey, we're going to help you if you want to run a campaign here, a bunch of screenshots of things we've done in the past case studies, things we know work. Uh, I know you don't have a team, let us know, we'll create the whole thing for you. We launched it, we tracked it, we published a blog, we saw a huge spike in revenue and average booking values. But that's because, well, fortunately, we were in a position to be able to do that. But also, we know that sometimes people are open and willing to try new things. They just, you know, need someone to give them the idea and give them the nudge and in this case, the support. I have to make a comment with Dan's camera. Damn, you, you have this camera. You are crystal clear, dude. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm lacking the Hawaii background. I got to be honest with you that that <laughs> business background just isn't rocking to me. But the whole clarity of you, man, you're crystal clear. You're 4K five by five, man. <laughs> that's how I roll. <laughs> well, don't don't Sorry. forget, uh, Dan can't have a background that's Hawaii right now because it's like two o'clock in the morning. Man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess we w- we wouldn't be able to see it anyway. I, so, I, yeah. I, I was actually the reason I joined is actually on a call at three in the morning. And, and if you look out, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll show you my window. It's kind of duskish out. Now. Oh, wow. Okay. Right, right. We all I want guess that's a little there. price to pay in paradise because for you, international business is kind of like time zone pain sometimes, I bet. Especially yeah. East Coast and stuff where you're like, oh, really? Sure, you want to talk that time? Can't we make it like 9 p.m. Yeah, your time? <laughs> sure the CEO can't meet at any other time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the rest of the time, he's in Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, thank you, Alan. That's true. There is a balance act when it comes to that, but that's so what we call the paradise tax. We gotta, we gotta pay it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, Carrie, I'm wondering if um, would would this benchmarking tool have the potential of replacing a shopping tool? Shopping, okay. shopping tool meaning comparing yourself to um, your market and your. Um, and the OTAs. Oh, like an OTA yeah. inside kind of thing? Yeah. yeah. Well, um, it can help provide insight into what's happening with you know your disparities in terms of frequency, average amount, you're being undercut, which OTAs are doing it and comparing that to others. So it's helpful in that sense. Um, I don't know enough about all the other tools out there, frankly, to say you know, wh- which one it's more similar to or um, you know, I, I do get asked about other benchmark reports a lot. So a star report, travel click 360. And what I always say is, I think there's, I think they're all fantastic reports. I think I've heard nothing but, you know, great feedback for, for, you know, so many companies that are providing that type of data. I guess my, my response in general would be, this is just different. First of all, it's free. Second of all, 
Um, it is very interactive. It's not a report per se. It's actually, you know, a tool where you can go in and apply your filter. So you can say, uh, today I want to look at length of stay, but I only want to look at it on mobile and I only want to look at it for Canadians. And by the way, I'm only interested in families. So you can apply all of these filters to be very finite in terms of the data that you want to share. So I've got marketers who care about certain things, revenue professionals care about entirely different reports. They're all logging into the same tools and able to generate whatever they need for their meeting that day to provi provide insight to their teams and away they go. So in that regard, I think it's quite unique. I want to come back to that and forgive me, I may have missed this at the beginning of the show, but that part where you said it was free? It is. <laughs> So people ask me why it's free, um, and I, I should explain that, <laughs> if that's what you're getting at, Dean, is why is it free? Well, I'm, I'm thinking the next question is how do you monetize it? There's got to be, yeah. you got to pay for it somewhere along the way. So our, our core business is we have a conversion and personalization platform. So we are in the business of optimizing hotel websites so that they convert better. So if you have a benchmark platform that provides more insight into your direct channel, and you can identify areas for improvement, then we have a platform that can help you with that. So for us, it's kind of, and there's no obligation, you don't have to use our other platform, but they just go hand in hand nicely. And um, the other you know, piece of that is we wanted to provide this to our clients. We knew they needed it, but if it's not free, the data is limited. Right. So that's the other piece is that with the network effect, the more people who want to share so that they can benefit, the better it is for everyone. I, I think mm -hmm. I, I caught the tail end of you talking about this. So I apologize because I didn't hear it. But it, it is where are you pulling the data from? Is it only from your customer base or is it broader than that? So it's anyone who opts in to take part. So we have started with our customer base as long as they wanted to opt in. Um, and Dan, it's the same scripts that you would be familiar with in the past. So when we worked together and we loaded scripts so that we could deploy our tools, it's the exact same script. We just need, you know, each brand that's interested in partaking to opt in. That's it. So my guess would be, though, that the larger brands would probably not take part. So you wouldn't have that data set. So as of yet, um, no, we just launched it three weeks ago, though, but we have had interest from some. So I don't know, you know, where that's headed. I clearly can't say, you know, what will happen. But I mean, it's open to everyone. I guess that's all I can say. And, and time will tell. But it's still a very new platform. And we certainly prioritized, you know, our 10,000 clients for onboarding before we started publicly talking about the platform. Well, I mean, I had a preview of it. It's super cool. I mean, it's just a matter of being able to get the the amount of data you need to make it accurate, and especially when you're talking about a market like Hawaii or something like that. You need to make sure that you have the right number of properties. Mm. Mm -hmm. Again, I probably missed this at the beginning, but what is the platform called? Oh, it's, it's called Bench Direct. Bench Direct. Yeah, I put the link in. But I'll put yeah. it again. Sorry, I'll put it again. Oh. again. And it, and it's not a free trial. It's it's just going to be oh, I see the link there. Okay. Uh, I'll put it back in just in case. So, uh, Carrie, from a from a use case perspective, you know, you mentioned uh, you mentioned you know a marketer who's looking at families, booking in Canada, things along those lines. You know, one of the one of the things that I always try to encourage people with reports, and I know a lot of us do here, is obviously you want them to be actionable, right? So. Can you give any examples or use cases of how people are using the data to make improvements or make changes and things like that? Right? What actions are they taking? Yeah, well, the family example is a really good one because we know people have been traveling with their families a lot this year, but you know, not everyone has a family or is traveling with their family. So it is important to make sure that you know who you're speaking to when you're um, Whoever is listening to the video, can you mute? It's probably Robert. Just saying, because he has a smirk on his face. He probably was, no, it's not Robert. Sorry about, sorry about that, Gary. It's Wait, really, my, it's really my fault. Robert I'm hard of hearing when there's cross talk. You know, it's bad. <laughs> so that's all. You, were, you were saying. I apologize for interrupting, but please. That's okay. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, just keeping your content relevant. If you have a family offer or you want to talk about babysitting services or all the fun things for kids to do in your area, make sure you're saying it to the right person. Just throwing it out there to everyone might actually deter the couple looking for the romantic getaway from even booking with you. 
because that's not what they had in mind. And, you know, and, and if my husband and I go away, I have three children, got nothing against kids, but sometimes I don't want to see kids. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's probably because you have three kids. I'm just saying there could be something there. <laughs> I mean, I remember staying at um, uh, the Four Seasons Punta Mita years ago as when I was a hotel reviewer for a company called Kiwi Collection. And they just did such a fantastic experience of completely catering to the two audiences, the, the couples and the families in one property, but you didn't even have to see each other. <laughs> so it's the same idea. You know, you want to make sure that you understand what people are looking for. So through search data, we know if there's a child in the search, then you push your family content, but don't just push it to everyone. But I think what Lauren was getting at before is that information, usually somebody comes to the website and they start looking around and it takes a while before they actually go to the booking engine to put in their, their data. Sure. Um, so, so you've, you you may have missed that boat, or at least I, I felt that way at my hotels. I wonder if we need to all switch to a thing that says, hey, you know, what kind of travel are you looking for today? You know, family, group, couples, solo. Business. You're right. There are definitely certain, you know, um, targeting triggers that are, it's a, where it's a requirement that a search is conducted, right? So we have to move people into the booking engine clearly to know what season they're looking to travel in and, and many other things. Um, when it comes to the homepage and moving people through top of the funnel, you know, we can focus more on things like location or where people have come from. So if you do have outbound linking from certain websites to yours and you're running promotions and things, we can look at that. And the other thing that's relatively new for us anyway is that you know, we can also trigger messages for hotels that might have a login. So if you have a loyalty program, you have a login, you can store information in your data layer. And, you know, we can trigger messaging based on that. So I might know more about you if you tell me that you are Adele Gutman and you log in to your account. Hmm. It's interesting. Have you, do you have people that have begun? Well, I know it's new. So probably this is a pre premature question in the sense that, from what you're saying that you're going to be able to garner from it, it seems like this would be a massively helpful web development data because as you begin to understand what people are using to navigate or discover about what your products are, you're going to be better able to determine first how they should discover it on the site and then second, how much of the content you should begin to expand related to what the usage is. And I know it's situational that at a certain time of year, certain types of people will be looking for certain types of data. So it'll be an evolving process, but it still seems like it would be helpful in that way, just as an insight to people's functionality usage of what you're providing, I guess. Yeah, and I think that's the case with both of our platforms, but um, it, you know, we have some brands that will say, oh, you know, one thing we realized this year is that we just, we need a new website, so we're just trying to figure out who's gonna build that for us. And they say, you know, maybe we'll wait and get back to this six months later. And then, you know, but then we are able to share that so many uh, um, hoteliers have just gain so much insight into looking at what's happening with the old website that helps them to make sure they don't make the same mistakes on the, the new website. So again, it's all about watching and learning, you know? Mm. So, so from that perspective, I would agree with you. Well, well, and I would, I would argue, you know, and I'm, a, I'm totally teeing you up, Carrie, to do a commercial for the personalization side of it. <laughs> but, you know, a good personalization <laughs> platform, you. I, <laughs> a good personalization platform, I would think, would almost help you, you know, redesign the site every visit that comes. You know, everybody who comes, you're giving them a personalized experience. If only there was a tool, and I can't think of, that could do something like that. <laughs> Carrie, do you know of any tools like that that actually help create those kind of experiences while people are on the website? It's such a good tool. It's such, it's such <laughs> an easy tool to use. I, I mean, I really enjoyed it. it get, I feel like it gives you so much flexibility. I'm sure that there are others companies that also work well, but I, I'm familiar with this one. It was so nice. It, 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 it was such a handy thing to have. Whatever you thought of, you could find a way to put it in with that, even if my regular booking uh, website didn't have that potential. I think another big um, important, thank you uh, uh, for that. Uh, I think one important thing to look for though, so. Adele, you know when I joined this company because I already knew you and um, I kind of looked at the whole space before I chose to 
represent this company. And um, anyways, one of the things being a, uh, having a luxury background uh, that was important to me is that messaging be subtle and on brand and native and you know highly customizable. And so back when we um, both were introduced to the host hotels network, Adele, um, some of those suggestions came from you. Some came from me. Some came from my other clients. But you know today we have a, a highly flexible platform on the design side. So when I say like just because we're talking about you know messaging people. You know, because I know that the people who look after the design of the website are cringing. They're like, I don't want to put anything on my beautiful brochure of a website. But you still can and it can still look good. You just need to choose multiple message formats. You don't want all pop ups, for example. We have, you know, inline format formats and you pick your own fonts and you pick your colors. And, you know, there's so many different opportunities to make information look like a beautiful part of your site and still really reach out and grab people. To connect with them so it doesn't have to be you know what we call the christmas tree effect mm -hmm. well and there's and there's the whole problem that I, I with no disrespect to people who build lovely websites and that's obviously a big part of it i think one of the mistakes that people have made for a long long time is that we've put a lot of focus on the frame and not enough on the painting right the customer mm -hmm. is not there because they want to deal with the website they're they're there because they want to deal with the content they want to deal with the information they want to deal with the things that answer their questions about their trip and their needs so anything that brings the painting to the to the, to the front that lets the frame kind of recede into the background is actually a good thing i would argue mm -hmm. Well, also, I, I see this as an empowerment tool for web developers in some ways, too, because mm -hmm. um, I, I, do, I love the arguments, not arguments, that's a rough term, the discussions, the lively discussions about preferences. And you have the developer who is resistant because they see the work requirement for the nuance change that the owner wants. Uh, then you have the very lively discussion of what it really is the color blue. And then you go off on these other teams. You need data to to quiet people down. That's a nice way of saying it. Shut them up and be another way. Um, <laughs> we get them over and say, hey, guys, guess what? Data shows this is what they want. Not whether it was the color blue you like, not whether you like the wireframe you designed because it was your favorite because you had it as a template from some other place and it saves you time working on it. It's because this is what we need to make it work, uh, to your point, Tim, for the person that wants to use it. So yes, front and forefront, it needs to do this thing because then this content has to show up because here's data that says this is the experience that people are, or content that people are looking for in their process. And yeah, so that, I think that really would help that discussion a lot in, in some ways of finalizing it rather than going around around the tree still. So exactly. yeah, I agree. Yeah, and when, when the whole COVID situation hit, it was so easy to immediately put out the, the information that you needed without having to go through any design process. Just open the tool, click what you needed, write it down, change it this afternoon, change it again tomorrow. And it and and it, it was very handy. I know that Tammy never has problems with their clients. They have wonderful, <laughs> positive, persistently excellent conversations. There's never a discussion or difference between what Tammy's professional opinion is versus the biased <laughs> kid of the owner of the son who wants it that way opinion i'm sure there's tammy right i mean you guys just smooth as glass right never never yeah can you yeah okay i i thought i was having issues with my mic so no no you're good you 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 no know, um never at all it's always i you know if i look if i had a nickel for every time um we talk about the pretty right and verse and the, no nobody reads content i don't know about you guys I read content and search engines read content and everybody reads content. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> no. And, and I love the idea, you know, the, the messaging, right. And I, I know we've played around with, with some, with personalization on things, uh, you know, uh, IP and knowing where they're at and doing person geo with targeted personalization and things like that. And you're right. It's, it's so helpful to have that data and have that information to be able to show. I, I loved what you guys were saying earlier about, well, it, even if ownership's not going to build that new website today, they're going to wait six months to a year. Having that data to know, this is one of the things we like to do. Like, like, let's look at the Google Analytics. Let's look at the data of your current site and figure out what's working and what's not, right, when we're building a new site. But, Lauren, you're, you're right. A lot of people, you know, design is very subjective. Um, people tend to have very strong opinions. 
I always suggest talking to your friends that aren't in hospitality because we're all biased, including me. Mm -hmm. uh, and so getting that feedback from someone that isn't a hotelier or in the business and does, you know, and asking them what they think, because I've gotten some great feedback from friends or I, I love actually my test oftentimes is showing a website to my husband <laughs> and, and asking his thoughts because he is so not computer literate or in the industry. And so, um, yeah, I, you know, uh, but yeah, Lauren, you're right. No one ever doesn't listen to data. My, my, my or, wife has stopped being my test subject because it's like trying to teach her, to, you know, when you, your husband tries to teach a wife how to drive back in the day when those clutches, you don't want to do that. You want to find your best friend to teach your wife how to drive a car with a clutch because you won't <laughs> be married long if you're the one teaching. So with me, with me, when it comes to websites, because I'll show it to her, she'll tear it apart and I'm like, I turn into the person that says, no, 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 I love that thing. That's what I... <laughs> It doesn't go well. So yeah, it, it, you, you do want that third party pin to it. So I, it, it, here's something that happened to me that goes to, to your idea of creative content and, and the interpretation of usage. I offered to do an adaptive site, not adaptive in the way we understand, but adaptive in the sense that it's kind of like uh, uh, Apple iOS. You just get new versions. It's not a, we're gonna do a new website six months from now. It's gonna, we're progressively going to keep refining the changes in the website as the demand changes to the, to the website. A little bit of like if we took your data carry, we did it in similarity of blocks of seasons and said, we're gonna change the functionality of the website based upon the, the demographics using the website for the content that they're wanting. We can't make it truly dynamic where we can drop in unique images or unique content, but we can change the basic content as we move forward. You're just doing that because you want to charge us to make a website all the time. No, 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 no. I'll do this, okay? <laughs> I'll make this for you because I want to make this work. And they're like, yeah, but then you're just going to charge. No, no, no. Get off the charging thing, okay? <laughs> I want to see if this would actually improve our consistency of conversion, our engagement times, our, our depth of content, our usage of content. I did come across a problem, and maybe this is a way for opening of the ability for the schema and the fixed data to still be relevant because I'm changing the prioritization it by doing that. I'm pulling it off of pages that had a higher priority into lower, deeper links. And I know Google doesn't quote penalize us for deep linking stuff as much as they used to, but I am changing where it's being found, which creates the necessary for redirections of content and so forth. And it also changes it being re-ranked and it does create a negative to it. So I, uh, even though I think it's a brainchild thought of like, oh, wow, we just make it usable for the people that are interested at the time. There is a logistics issue about the real functionality value of it, which I'm bringing this up with you, Carrie, because as you, I would be like a kid in a candy store with your data. I'd be like, how much can I really do with this in the terms of what we're talking about? Design, content, height, you know, placement and so forth. How much of that really creates back of the house issue stuff, for lack of a better way of saying it. I don't know. Well, I go down I mean, a rabbit hole. Yeah, I went down a rabbit hole. I mean, this gets <laughs> this gets super geeky, and, and I'm probably not the best person to answer this. I would suspect Tammy can answer this better than I could, but I'll take a quick stab at it. And then, you know, Tammy, if you if I if I go off the rails here, by all means, you know, you say, well, not exactly. Oh, like I never did. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, obviously, if you're personalizing, if you are personalizing the experience based on what you know about the behavior of the customer, bringing some content to the fore and some content, you know, uh, being prioritized and some content being deprioritized at the page, when Google's crawler comes to the site, it's seeing the site the way it is for the crawler. Right? right, and I'm not suggesting you have a crawler version and a human version because that's a no-no. Don't do that. Let's be very clear. <laughs> but the version that the crawler sees is static, as it were, mm -hmm. and then just certain things that that shouldn't necessarily have a, a real ranking issue, from my understanding at all. I mean, Tammy, you know, my am, am I way off base on that, or is that more or less correct? No, I don't think you're way off base. Um, I, I, I do think you should I'm create not, a website. way off base, apparently. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I do think you should create a website with a white background with hidden white text all throughout it, right? That's, that's, there it I, is. I, I, Let me be very clear. If it sounded like I was recommending I'm that, I'm so yeah. not. I'm so not. For the record, not. No, no, big fat. No, 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 no. And you're like, I want don't spinny smiley faces in a purple background. Just seeing. Oh no. It, it's just no. like people that ask me, can I have? Can I create a separate 
accessible website or ADA oh. website versus that, like, no, 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 no. 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 <laughs> do not do that. Do not do that. No, I think it kind of like to, I, I mean, at the end of the day, right, it's about the content and information on your page. So if you're deep, I mean, changing around the way the content is on the page, but it's still a similar content, like that's not going to really change much. What I think, and Lauren, correct me if I'm wrong, you were kind of talking about is, you, you're changing things so much that there are, there's content that, that's going away. Maybe it was marked up with schema, but now that schema is not relevant to the content and information on the page. And so now, I, I think, like I said, yeah, no, no, you're right. That's Lauren's right. I'm brain. prioritizing it. I'm changing the display window is what I'm doing. I'm, you know, in old terms, I'm, I'm changing literally the highlighted yeah. content and putting it someplace else so it's no longer the relevancy that it once had. I'm literally relocating it and deprioritizing its value. Yes, I am changing the schema of functionality of it. Yeah. So, in, and in that case, then to 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 do it right, right, in order to from a technical standpoint, you do need to update your schema to make sure it's matching the information that's on the page. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, static is static. There's always going to be address nap and all that stuff, but just right. But the other stuff of the prioritization of it, uh, content wide content, and I'm not talking about you know features and promotions and things. I'm talking about content about the relevancy of what your interest is at that time. Skiing versus mountainside activities would be two dramatic black and white variations of what am I putting as the highlighted feature focus of what I'm I'm targeting compared to what I was targeting beforehand when I changed it out. So. Yeah. And some of that could just be where you, I mean, and obviously case by case and all of that, but you have those seasonal destinations where you're just changing the page, like from the home page. where am I directing people to? Okay. It's mountain activities in the summer. It's winter activities in the winter, but you still have both of those pages on the site. So in that case, you don't have to update your schema. You're just changing from the home page where you're sending people to, right. Or change and maybe changing out some imagery on the home page to match Right. That season, that feel. Um, right. That's something we've, we've done. That's a lot not, of, that, right? that, so, that's, but that's, that's not going to, yeah, yeah, yeah that's should, a much easier way to. I, I didn't realize the talent we have. We should ask Dan. Dan, when you have to change from ski season to not ski season, what do you guys do for marketing down there? <laughs> 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 Sorry. Carrie, any insights that you've gotten from the launch of it from people that are already using it that you're beginning to see things that you didn't plan for in its development that people use? Because like with any development, once you put it out in the public, you think it's this thing, but everybody makes it a widget that's totally different or something. Is somebody already beginning to do things? You're like, whoa, that's interesting. Or, oh, I didn't think about using it for that. Does anybody come up and surprise you with this stuff yet? I have one client who just loves it and he's a revenue guy and he's actually shown me full reports that he's put in, put together PowerPoint presentations and he's got a couple other vendors with other data, right? Like about driving the traffic because we're all about the conversion metric. And oh my gosh, the amount of uh, information that he came up with, I hadn't even, I play with the tool, you know, whenever I have free time, which is never, but, um, and he, he actually really inspired me. So talk about having imagination. He gave me the imagination <laughs> and uh, I loved it. And then, but one of the fun things that came out of it is he said, okay, the next thing I want to be able to do is br I want it branded with my colors. So I want all my charts and graphs and everything in my report to have my brand colors. Can I do that? I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. So you know, that's uh, being looked at now for a future version. Me now, I, mean, I guess in that strange way, have you started creating a roadmap and have you made that available for people to start? Because I imagine the usefulness of this tool is definitely going to create creativity, like just this guy. Exactly. You know, where they're going to be like, "Hey, I wish there was this. I wish it was that." Because I have found yeah. that when we provide what I think is a cool widget to somebody, not that I'm programming anything, but when I say, hey, there's something for this, I get exactly what you just said. Oh, I want to make it do this. And I want to do this. And I want to put this logo here and I want to be this size and want this color and I want this one. And you're like, um, gee, okay. <laughs> yeah. We have a, a lot of new things coming, a lot of them in Q2, but what we've done is we've set up um, some beta testers who helped us, you know, clients in each of the markets we work, key markets we work in. And um, they've, you know, been giving us feedback all along. And now that they're using it, we check in with them. We write everything down. We apply what we what makes sense to us, what we think is feasible. The one big thing I know we have coming in Q2 is for hotels that do have multiple properties um, and even sub brands, they'll be able to cluster their own um, properties and sub brands so that when they're looking at, you know, um, benchmarking data, 
when they're not looking at, you know, the, the lookalike hotels or the destination hotels, they can also look at, you know, um, uh, one property versus only their own sub brand, or they can regionalize their hotels if that's important. So just giving them the ability to slice and dice their own data in a way that makes sense to them. Very Maybe cool. you need a, a Facebook group or a LinkedIn group of your users so they can share how they're using it and yeah. inspire each other. I love that idea. That's a great idea. <laughs> I'll share that, Adele. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it, it lends itself to as these changes are happening, because you're saying from your perspective of Vancouver, just as an example of, with the border potentially opening up by the end of summer is still the projected potential of this. Yeah. The data that you're looking at is current user data. I mean, you guys have no historical data to compare with current data. You're just, yeah. Yeah. The, the starting line was a few weeks ago for you, right? Unless you're already one of our clients on our conversion and personalization ah. platform, because okay. they're, the scripts that we load are exactly the same. So again, you still have to opt in in order for your data to go into Bench Direct, but we already have that data. So we have hotels now that can look at year over year metrics, um, which has been really nice for them because again, you have a lot of data on your own. We understand that, but you know what was happening last year in your destination. So you know you can do some comparing to the lookalikes and and the others. And, uh, and again, apply the multiple filters we have that are related to, you know, top of funnel or visitor profile information and the, the pieces of information that you might not have in other benchmark reports. So I'm going to channel my inner Dean for a second. And Dean is constantly reminding everyone that everybody's data is crap. Or actually, let me put it Scottish <laughs> twisted. It's crap. <laughs> <laughs> um, because of the, the manualness of manual. That's not even a word. The old data to the current data, to the future data, there's no connectivity to stuff for a lot of people. And there is, unfortunately, a lot of people that are pontificating on their ability to interpret the forecasting models of what the future is going to be. This is what we should be doing. This is how we should be doing it. But they're basing it on irrelevant correlations between what was anticipated before the world came to a dark side, the living of the dark side, and the emergence from the dark side. Um, it sounds like your data, even being in this nascent level right now forward, is going to give some perspective of changing in trend. Just, hey, when we turned it on, this is what was happening. As life has been moving forward, it's changing in these directions. These are things that are happening to you and to people around you of similarities in business. Do you see in the, your evil plan to take over the universe that you're going to start doing something that is broader than just offering the platform where you can say, let us share with you some direction to some of this data. Because I, I have a reason for asking that question, but let me leave it at that first. Yes. So there will be um, pointers, for example. You know, if you were able to bring your conversion rate up to the same level as your destination, you could expect this much more revenue. Okay. Ooh, that sounds cool. Yeah. So that's coming. Um, and that's just like, that's just generated from looking at the data. I mean, it's all factual, right? So there's nothing, uh, not steering anyone in a crazy direction. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but to your point, the historical data, I agree with you. It's not that important right now. Some people want to know it though. They want to know, you know, how soon is, how long is it going to take us to get back to what we knew before? Um, but it's more useful, as you also mentioned, to look at, okay, what, what trends can I jump on top of right now? <laughs> oh, people are staying longer. They're more comfortable booking a longer stay. I need to get on top of that. Like, I can't be, you know, converting short lengths of stay when my neighbors are, you know, creating a longer length of stay. I know people are willing to stay longer. So what does that tell me? I, I want to add to your roadmap one thing, affirmational metrics in the sense that what gets bogged down in people's PowerPoint is they present, I do, me personally, and I see it with too many other people, they present so many variations to what they're accumulating for data that the decision makers sit there going, okay, well, get back with us when something changes. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Something's right. changing right now, and we need a decision right now to do something right now that we're telling you we want to do right now. Where did we miss the point? Well, you showed me too much data, and I don't know what you're talking about. Because, you know, whatever. And, and it gets into this, but if you come over and say, here's a metric. Red, bad, green, good, arrow up, good, arrow bad, down. You're here. Be this, do that. And then say, right, check, be good. <laughs> Bob, we, go, go play golf now. <laughs> we also 
actually, and I haven't gotten into it because it's kind of hard to explain without visuals and I didn't want to go down a rabbit hole as we say here, but um, we have something that we call the direct booking index. And it is that measurement and it is green or red and it is a number, it's a percentage and it will let you know how well are you doing in, you know, in every, um, there are various reporting sections in Bench Direct. So you can focus on conversion, conversion, OTA disparities, um, demand, et cetera, et cetera. And when you're in each section, you're going to see a DBI, direct booking index, that tells you how you're faring compared to everyone else. Wow. You know what, Carrie? If I had a, a dream that I would love to see, you, you know the global review index? It, it, um, it is something that uh, Review Pro has. I'm sure that Revenate must have something similar to that and, uh, and other reports as well. But an index number of how their guest reviews are, not just from one website, but from all of them combined. And how how your your level on your global review index compares to your direct booking index, compares to your RevPAR index, that would be like... That's an interesting point too, wow. yeah. <laughs> that would be amazing to see. It'd be really because interesting to take... Stars, but stars are sort of random, in, in, in my opinion, compared to what do guests really think. I think we need to take those three numbers and kind of line graph them against each other as well and see how they parallel over time, right? So as one increases or decreases, what does that do to the other and, and how do they affect one another? Wow, that would be so amazing. Dave. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah I agree. And, and I think to your point about adding, you know, review information, I also had one of my clients refer me to a phenomenal company that looks at accessibility and usability and you know, once we, and our founder always says, there's a reason our name is the Hotels Network because it's always been, uh, you know, the plan has always been to help strengthen the industry by, you know, sharing data and the network effect can can help us all in many areas, not just related to conversion. So as you're mm -hmm. saying, use, usability, whatever it may be, there are all kinds of opportunities for future growth and partnerships and that's exactly where we're headed. Hmm. Okay. It's, you, you, go ahead, Tim. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, I, I since there was a pause, I was just going to say, it's lovely to see you all. Carrie, thanks so much for being here today. This was awesome. I wish I could stay for longer. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have a commitment. But, uh, oh, just I, just I, so you know, Carrie, Tim works for the CIA. He's on covert <laughs> operations for secretive <laughs> business redevelopment. Uh, we thought it was an abnormality on some things he referred to that happened politically. So we don't know where that connection goes to, but we know that Tim's involved. And he plays his magic guitar sometimes. So every once in a while, he'll bless us with a guitar rendering. So <laughs> yeah. I'm evil, and I'm not really taking over the world. So, oh, no, you are. You are. You're, you're, yeah. Please yeah. take over. Please <laughs> take over the world. People, people who want people who want to make things better for hotels to get more please. direct business should be the ones who take over the world. By all means, please do take over the world. Let us, over and the world. let us know how we can help do that. I, I'm all in favor of that. <laughs> we'll be little yellow people. We'll be minions. It'll be good. It'll be a great thing. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, thank but, you. If people want to find out where you are, where do they go? Uh, TimPeter.com and uh, TC Peter on Twitter. Basically, Tim Peter on all the other uh, social networks. So, and so, you and I are uh, also doing a conversation with you about VR. Just so you know, I'm going to bug the bejeebers out of you. I do know you. that. Yes, I got that. I got the headset right over there. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, just let you know. Because so. ha I'm having more and more meetings in VR, and I want to know what you're using and how you're using it, because that's exactly what I'm doing right now. So just We're doing know. meetings in VR, and it's a pretty it, – it, it's terrible and awesome simultaneously. It's – yep. It's, there are yeah. things about it that it, everybody should do it, and there are things about it that it really doesn't work yet. And when they, get, when they make those two things closer, it's going to be really, really awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool stuff. We're not there Thank yet. you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, we can have that conversation another time. Great seeing you all. Happy 300th uh, episode. Yay, happy 300th for us. Yeah. And, uh, 300. Looking, looking forward to seeing you for 301. Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> Bye, Bye now. Thank you. <laughs> and I also very, here. Well, I was going to say very, very quickly. Yep. Um, I have to do the same thing. I have to drop off because I have something, okay. but I carry great stuff. Um, Thanks, really, Robert. yeah, really appreciated. Uh, oh, all the, all the things that you've covered. Um, but I wanted to say, Lauren, 
congratulations on your 300th birthday. You don't look a day over 117. Thank you. For a so, man that was with me on show whatever it was, one or two or whatever. I think it was you, four. You look pretty smart yourself, it was buddy. four, yeah. <laughs> Robert, just make sure you bring in those uh, 747 safely there, okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually just the – oh, now see, Tammy has it. Has a uh, a brethren cat to my cat. So. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. The, the executive now producer. We know, now we know where the brains of Milestone are. Right, right here. Yeah. <laughs> yep. No, I always yeah. thought Robert was more of a golf commentator. He's on the 12th green. That's right. Here we are. Here we are. So uh, keep no, all that. Thanks for jumping in. And thank you for the newsletter, by the way. I just went over and yeah, it was a little, a little late. I had to take my daughter to get her four wisdom teeth out. So. <laughs> Okay. So I figured I figured it probably wasn't good form to just like, well, I'll be back in a couple hours. You'll be fine and leave her at the at the uh, oral surgeon's office. But uh, anyway, yeah, I gotta go. Gotta uh, go. Do where, that. Robert, they find you? where do they go? Where do they find you? Rockcheetah.com or Robert K. Cole on social media. Right. Or or if you want to subscribe to the newsletter. No. Oh, newsletter, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Bitly slash Rock Cheetah, all lowercase. Yeah, not the Twitter account. Do not follow Rock Cheetah on Twitter. Just don't do, do it. Do not. Do not follow Rock Cheetah on Twitter. <laughs> There's too much stuff flowing That's through the there. Fire hose of happy. All right. Hey, anyway, yeah. Thanks, Robert. Appreciate your time today. Oh, I, I have to say, I was kind of hoping that for the 300th episode that we would get a Photoshopped version of you looking like one of those Persian warriors from the 300. Oh, wow. Yeah, that would take a lot of Photoshop. Just a lot of Photoshop. I mean, not the ad part. The ad part would be real. Oh, sure. The face, the face yeah. part might be a little different, you know, but the ad part would be totally real. <laughs> <laughs> and Bye, guys. Bye, Robert. All right. Uh, all right. So have we solved World Peace yet? No. We <laughs> I know um, Terry has to go, so I wanted to make oh, her okay. a chance to give her her contact details. Please, I just please, please, Terry. To say thank you. It is such an honor and a privilege to be a part of your show and 300. That's mm -hmm. phenomenal. And uh, great to see you again, Adele and Dan. Um, and uh, I'm at thehotelsnetwork.com. Excellent. Excellent. And we, 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 I'll keep sharing the link. Of course, the, the link will be in the show notes as well and so forth. And uh, I, I, as I told you, Carrie, earlier, when we get the emails from people that watch the simulcasting in Sydney time and London time, anything that comes over directed towards you, I'll make sure that you get a, a copy of it or anything, questions or follow up on stuff thank like you. that. So appreciate it. Thanks. No, thank you for your time today. Awesome to have you. Good luck on the house thing, by the way. Good luck on that. Thank you, Carrie. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Dan and Tammy, God, so like, this is like rare privilege to have you guys, especially, I mean, Dan, it's like, you know, I know that the time zone is really terrible. And Tammy, I know you've been having the house thing, so I know it's like, you know, yeah, right? Box, emptying a box or getting on a camera. I think I'll take box for 200, Bob. <laughs> What's behind yeah. the big box? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll take what's behind the big box. Y'all see the empty wall? You don't see all the boxes in right? the closet. Right? Yeah, we yeah, you don't see the front of my desk either because it would be like, whoa, dang, Lauren, clean that stuff up. <laughs> but no, it, it actually, uh, Tammy, I know you've been on, on Clubhouse a little bit. Dan, have you been on Clubhouse recently? You know, the, the, the time zones are tough for me. I can never get on when everybody's on. So um, my, the core of my day I spent in, in my morning and, and by the time it's my afternoon, the day is done everywhere else. I, I caught a couple of shows in Japan. Uh, yeah, not yeah. too many. Uh, I see you guys are doing some interesting stuff, but they tend to be Eastern time, so I just can't make. Yeah, it. no, I mean, just in general, though, have you been able to join in some of the conversations about with Clubhouse and stuff, other than just the ones we're running? But I mean, any of the other ones you've been able to like? I mean, that some people is finding it to be very addictive of a platform. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't found that. I've hopped in and out of rooms, and and, and unless it's a very specific room um, that I can find. Um, I haven't been all that impressed with some of the content out there. There's definitely some like, really, you're talking? <laughs> I, I think one of the problems I have, and maybe it's because I haven't spent enough time on it, is just trying to find rooms. Mm. You know, it, 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 sometimes interesting ones will pop up because I'm like linked to you or to Tammy or somebody else, and it pops up and I'm ready to listen to it. But if you just hop on and you try to find stuff, it, it seems like that's something they need to work on. Yes, the searchability of it is definitely a limitation. I got to say, though, from a, a exposure point of view, 
there's been some pretty crazy people that join the room that you quickly look up. I mean, uh, Ed's great about looking up people on LinkedIn as they're doing it. I tend to just look at their pro- their profile while they're in the room, and and some people don't put a lot of information on it. But you're talking to some pretty interesting people that you don't normally get to be in front of, which has been kind of fun because some of the dialogues where you're asking opinions and people jump in, um, they're pretty profound. We've had, I mean, Dean, you've been there. Where we've had people that jump in and give some perspective. You're like, oh yeah, and like dang, you know, they're running fifty hundred ro- uh, hotels, you know, and poof, all of a sudden they're giving you an opinion about labor, and you're like. Worth listening to, you know. We had one girl one time, uh, Min- Minja, I think, if I'm, if I'm saying her name correctly, but uh, works in Las Vegas and was able to give some really great insights about what's going on in the Vegas hotel market. That, that was fascinating to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was talking about some things that you just don't see in the normal yeah. news coverage. It, it, it's how kind of a, the rooms. I mean, how do you, is it just because you're connected to them or? Yeah, usually that's been my best way of who's been been connected with uh, will pop up. Hey, you want or they'll start inviting you because they've been in your room and they know that you're on that content line and they'll be like, hey, you want to join in this room about restaurant marketing? Oh, okay, let me go see what it is, you know, kind of thing. I I, I don't tend to spend as much time for because I'm spending so much time already running a room, but I'll go listen to some rooms if they're applicable to content just to see what people's perspective. It is kind of funny how some people will listen to one room, hear what somebody else says, and then jump into another room and act like they said it. I'm like, you know, I was there when you did that. <laughs> you know? Interesting. But, uh, yeah. Are you calling me out, idea. Lauren? No, no, not you. Not you. <laughs> I'm talking about some other people that will pop around in some rooms. And I think you know who I'm talking about. But anyway, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, 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 it's inter- the reason why I bring up Clubhouse is not because of the fact we do it on Monday through Thursday or something. It's just how we're getting our information is really shifting a lot. I mean, uh, I wish we get Jason Fried on here because Jason's been kind of like at the epicenter of the transition of data. You know, he runs that Hotel Recovery 2020 thing, and he's always been an amazing journalist. He's always developed great content. He's always been thoughtful. He's always been insightful. He he cores past the buzzwords and past the uh, the generalities of what people say, and he really tries to validate whether they're actually talking through their hat or they're talking about something they know. And he's been really good about that. But literally, if you follow the tr- the line of this stuff, look what Skift has done. Look what even Focusrite has been doing and stuff like this. They've shifted how they're trying to present data. Um, I'm not a fan of Skift when they went behind their very expensive wall, but it did clean up their content a lot. You know, it did it did legitimize a lot of because for a while their skiff was just buzzland. It was in my mind. I mean, I'm, I'm this personal opinion on my side. It was like whatever buzz headline they could create, and then they regurgitated somebody else's content or retooled somebody else's content, and it was superficial at best. At least now, from what I see, I mean, Nadell, you share some stuff because you signed up with Skiff, right? You you had Skiff for a yeah, while. Yeah, I'm not. You know. I love Rafat Ali so much, but I don't, so I don't, he doesn't want to hear me say this, but you know, I really have to think about whether I really visit that, that page enough to, to it's just expensive. that expense. If, if maybe I was some big corporation or maybe my company was paying for it, that would be one yeah. thing. But since it's out of my own pocket, mm-hmm. there are so many ways to get information. Yeah. And, and I found a lot of times from the network of you all and others, I get more relevant, uh, timely information from my network than I do from those that try to take the information and then present it. You know, like, okay, we're gonna take this information, put it together and put it out. I learn more from you all. Go ahead, Doug, sorry. Well, I, I was saying the um, the hotel recovery and the rock cheetah, those, those things uh, really just, oh, they, you know what? What's important to them all of those things are important to me. I, mm-hmm. I and even if they live on the periphery of what I would consider my central interest, I look at it because they put it together yes. for me, and, and my mind opens to another way of thinking. So I really appreciate those, um, those, those little collections, those curated mm-hmm. collections of content. I love it. Yeah. I, I'm also probably getting either intolerant of it or these webinar cycles that people go through where they do canned presentation content. I'm getting very impatient with them. I'm getting or frustrated because I'm listening to stuff that's been so purified in the dialogue of the weeks that it's taken for them to aggregate it together 
I, I sometimes see these webinars that hype up what they're going to do. This is what I appreciate what Milestone doesn't do. Now, they, they, what you guys produce is timely, effective, interactive. The one with Banu, I'm totally geared in on that one, by the way. Just, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that one. Um, because a lot of the times these presentations get contrived as being a great release of data. And then you get to it and you're excited about what they're going to talk about. And it's like, this is not new stuff. And also it's not really accurate stuff or it's not. And it's all skipping a stone where they're just enticing you because they either solicited the people that were participating that this is a good lead gen forum. So they're going to do this presentation, but they don't dive into it. Or it's self-supporting of an organ, you know, uh, an entity that's saying we're we're in the front line, but really they're not. They're just taking data and putting it together and putting a label on it, and then saying you should join us. You know, um, Dan, what you guys do for training is awesome because it it creates a strong baseline of this is what you need to know to do these things, and you guys are excellent at maintaining that baseline of you can't talk about knowing these things if you don't know at least this and to do this kind of stuff. So the value of what you and Holly do with the, the training, profound, because that does create a baseline for a lot of people that act like they know what they're talking about. But if you even asked half the questions what you guys probably trained for in your classes, they'd be sitting there going, oh, yeah, let's not talk about that and they'll move on, you know? You're feeling sometimes I, I see an article that has to do with how to manage reviews or, you know, oh gosh, it's so, it's either completely misleading, completely wrong. Fulfilling, yeah. Like, we do all of this stuff. Like, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's so frustrating. And it's written by people who call themselves experts, but they have no basis for which to do so. Credential to it. Well, yeah. D Dean's sitting back, and I'm going to point at Dean because Dean lives this worse than all of us. I can be honest with you. In the world of MetaSearch, there's mm -hmm. a, oh, I know all about MetaSearch. You don't know diddly. You know, it is fun because you see these articles that are posted out there. And, and in fairness to them, actually, they're, they're, they're bringing up good conversations and they're bringing up good points. But a lot of times when I read some of those articles, it's the same stuff that I've seen five other people already post about. This isn't new content. But then on the other side of that, you run into this other challenge, especially when you're planning a webinar, that you have a very vast audience, some of whom are at the 201 level, some of whom need a glossary of terms, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you're trying to appeal to all of those and, and produce content. And, and that, that's difficult to do. You almost have to divide it up a little bit. Uh, but yeah. yeah. That's true. I, 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 I think about it. it. One of the reasons I don't produce a ton of content is that I want to produce stuff that's good and original. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is so much of this, what I call master of the obvious content out there. Like, you know, five, yeah, and it's all, and, and, and it's always like the five things or the eight things or the 10 things, right? And the five things you should do, you should have a website, right? You know, it starts with like these things, right? <laughs> so, and, and, and I think it's in everything, whether it be reviews and meta search, you have all these people just producing content for the sake of content. And, it, and it's just not compelling. It's not. I don't, I hope well, you take this as a compliment, Dan, but I see you as a masterful comedian. And I mean this in the purest of sense. You have to know something so well to be make to make fun of it. And you don't produce like this machine of content. You're not spewing out all the stuff you know. I've always looked at it as like, man, Dan, you know so much about this stuff. But when you bring out the content, I still remember a presentation when you that you first started rolling out with HSMAI, where you pointed out that obvious stuff in such a wonderfully fun way that it resonated with everybody in the room. Because what you presented and how you presented it was so factual, but so functional, but it was done in a way that was so comfortable conversation. It wasn't like bullet point slide 12 and bullet point slide 13. It was fun, interactive, like, let's look at this for a second. And then you pointed out the obvious. Let's see this. Point out the obvious. The, 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 the wit of it, I guess, is, is you have to know it really, 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 really well to make fun of it. It's like the, the, the compliment you can always give somebody that learns a new language. When they can tell a joke in the, a new language and people laugh, that's when you know you're getting good at the language because you're actually able to, to use the language the way it was intended. You do that with what your content is. You may not be chugging out a monthly newsletter or 
a weekly you know, blog or something. But when you present, you present with a certain insightful clarity. So I hope you take that as a compliment as being the comedian of the hospitality. <laughs> I do. I do. I do. You know, I'll take that. That's why, I, that's why I produce content once a year because I really need to save up for that. <laughs> yeah, just build it all up and then boom, there it is. <laughs> Lauren, you know what you did that was just so much fun and I, I wish you would do it more. We, we have to think about it, how to do it more. I loved, I think it was at a rocket conference and you just said, whatever your hospitality marketing oh. problems are, just lay it out there. Just tell me your problem and we're going to whip up some, some ideas on how to solve it. Not necessarily the idea, but uh, uh, options of ideas. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was so fun. And you were, there isn't, I really believe that there probably isn't anything that you couldn't speak to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can throw sling, I can sling stuff. Yeah, but no, it, 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 I get that from the rocket. Thank you. Thank you. It just, that came out of the rocket presentations that I remember, actually, I remember the time I first used it was in Las Vegas. So Las Vegas, they are different. We know they don't, they, they're <laughs> really different. Um, they don't use star reports, obviously, and stuff like this. They have their own their own world and so forth. Um, they, I was trying to solicit them to engage, and did the same kind of thing. Like, okay, guys, I, I, this was my first place I was doing it because I was told, listen, these guys don't talk. They don't raise their hands. They don't ask questions. They're sitting right next door to their competitor. Their competitor is sitting in the chair right next to them. Okay, so they don't want to share anything about what they're doing or what they're wanting to because it's like sharks in the water with blood. If you show that you don't know something, then the person sitting next to you is going to want to exploit that. So I asked that same question. I said, hey, let's come up with an idea that what's challenging you guys are doing, right? Crickets. One little hotel off the strip in the far end that just opened up was willing to share a general conversation about something. Now, I had prepared for this where I researched everybody's comp set, blah, 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 and all this other stuff. I just went over and says, okay, so I said, normally I'd be general about what you could do. I'm going to be specific on how to take exactly the business from them right over there. And I pointed to the, the Mirage people. I said, I want to show you how to take their business right now. And I pulled up on the screen and I started showing them everything that was wrong with their website, what their tracking was wrong, what they needed to take, what their demographics were wrong, what marketing platforms they weren't doing well and what their conversions should have been with all the tools I was ranting about. And everyone just sat there going, oh, crap. Next thing you know, we started having a conversation because people were like, wait a minute, if you're going to take his business, I want his business. So everybody started piping up and asking questions. But thank you. Yeah, it, it, it's amazing the brain power in the rooms. We forget. I do. I don't say we. I do. When you're talking to a group of people in the industry, the brain power in that room is profound. If you just give them the chance to contribute to the conversation, it's not you presenting. It's everybody else uh, having an opinion. It's, it's really neat when you get that magic where everybody wants to share it's pretty cool and that that that's those rare moments in that sense so i was once at a conference where people were invited to to stand up and present their question and the the panel would and also other people from the audience would say what they suggest for an answer so one lady uh, corporate travel manager stood up and said you know, I've picked this hotel, but everybody just keeps going to this other hotel. It's so annoying. Like, what is a person to do? And I stood up and I said, well, you know, if I were that hotelier, I would make sure I invited, you know, all the decision makers, uh, you know, to come and have a tour of the hotel, maybe have a drink, see uh, what we offer, maybe make a special for your first time stay. Uh, you, you know, we'll have something special, you know, to welcome you. Just, you know, something to make it fun for the traveler and 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 good for, uh, very comfortable for the people who are the bookers. And, and a few other things like that. And then she said, what hotel did you say you were with? That's the hotel where everybody's staying. I can't think of that. <laughs> uh, it's true. It, it is. It is. It's so funny. It, it is neat when you go. You, 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 it's the same thing. It's like if Tim was here, I'd give him the same compliment that I always give him is that I have never seen anybody orchestrate a panel as well as Tim in the sense of how he, without being the person that talks, solicit the engagement of the panel so well that the panel adds things to their dialogue that they probably didn't plan on adding when they went up on stage. As much as preparation they may have had, Tim solicits great dialogue. By the same token, Tammy, I've seen where you've, 
made a knockout presentation and somebody asked the most silliest of questions and uh, how you can train yourself saying, so what part of data did you miss? <laughs> you know, because they asked something that you so pointed out repetitively in your presentation and they and then somehow maybe they got stuck in the question at the beginning and then they just don't it's like they got stuck and they didn't keep on listening and I, the people that do that you know they ask a question that you have answered and, and hopefully i mean it's also our if we didn't clarify it's our own issues but you crystal clear with it repetitively in very variations you know and yet the questions come through and i sit there going wow how can you ask that question with what just got presented and it's not a, it's not an obtuse thing. No, and I, I think you're right. I think some people, and I mean, I do it right. I'm I'm watching a presentation and I get stuck on something. Like a, I'm going to ask a question, and um, I sw I swear I have COVID induced ADHD. I don't know about <laughs> anybody else. Um, you know this this like you know squirrel over here kind of stuff. So, so yeah. I see it, and I actually think that's why you know to the to the comments and, and Dan, I agree. I think you put out great content, and I also agree that your presentations are humorous in a way that gets the point across and people remember them. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, I'm, Lauren, I'm pretty sure I know exactly which presentation you were talking about. I think it was 2019 HSMAI, yep. maybe been 18, yep. but. Yep. Yep. Um, <laughs> so, but I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with having. Uh, writing an article that maybe isn't wholly original or, or you know, where you're just kind of refreshing because first of all, we all have different audiences and different distribution networks, right? So people, that's why yesterday that article that I shared Lauren in Clubhouse as far as, um, you know, from, from Peter Ricci and the group as far as, uh, Oh my gosh! See, this is the ADHD brain. <laughs> it's the, the move. Anyway, and done like um, a thousand things have happened since then. Just so you know, yeah, know it's not it at all. <laughs> but but that article, that's why I gave it to you to share too, because your network and my networks, while there's some overlap in the Venn diagram, there's also a lot of semi. So there, I don't think there's anything wrong with, and that's also why I curate a lot of content versus I don't produce a ton of content myself either, frankly, because I don't think of myself as a writer. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm working on that. I'm actually taking a course, but that's another story for another day. Um, but I do think giving, you know, the more you can give information and even if it's base level as laughing Dean at your comment, it's so true. You've got everything from 101 to 301, right? And I remember doing a, a conference with a colleague a couple years ago for a management company, 250 directors of sales and marketing and general managers in a room. And so of course you had, and I mean, we were on stage for two and a half hours and doing you know, everything digital. And when we got to the paid marketing section, I stopped on a slide and said, and, and stopped for a minute and said, okay, for the next 10 minutes, I'm going to bore about 50% of the room. I just ask that you bear with me. I need to get everyone to a level playing field. And my next slide was what is paid search? Because let's be real. Like I knew there were gonna be people in that room that needed that base level. Mm -hmm. And I laid it out, give me 10 minutes. I'm gonna bore you, but it's okay. Let's get everyone to this base level. And as much as we think that you know, and, and, and let's be real, I have, a, I have this amazing team of brilliant people, including, you know, Banu, who's our president, who, uh, Lauren, you know, we have a webinar coming up next week on entity search and all kinds of cool things um, that are coming in the world of the search engines that I think, you know, brilliant, but I've got this whole team to draw resources on. So I like to share because I know that they're what make me smart and make me know anything that I know. But I, I'll talk to people all the time and I'm always amazed. I mean, you're talking to people, high level brands and d big companies that don't know the basics. Mm -mm. And well, so I've learned not to assume, I'm sorry, I've just learned not to assume that anybody knows anything, including me. <laughs> so, uh, and, and just kind of talk through with them. So go ahead, Dean. Yeah, yeah because, well, the because, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry, that's the same thing that I have to do when we're talking about MetaSearch to like give these MetaSearch webinars and presentations. And I, but I have to start off with the answer of, or the question of what is MetaSearch? We have to first define that and set that playing field, like you were saying. So some people have seen that question and answer that, what is it, many times over. But we have to establish that foundation before we can talk about anything beyond that. Mm -hmm. That's why what yeah. Dan does is so powerful, because it is 
you're providing that baseline for people so that that they do know going into what they're listening to from a Dean or a me or a Tammy or Dandel or something, what that value proposition of what we're talking about is because without it, there's no reference point. And, and yeah, I've, I've had that damn moment where I'm going through this, what I think is a brilliant discussion on the meaning of the universe. And I'm coming to the conclusion of 42 and somebody comes back going, so what does PPC stand for again? <clears throat> <laughs> anyway, no, 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 I'm sorry. It's a great point. You know, just because I know something doesn't mean the general manager knows that information the way I would. And he may want to go or she may want to go to that conference and and expand their mind and their their understanding of what it is that I, I'm doing or talking about. Same thing for the owner. I mean, you know, the owner may be, you know, using a flip phone and not even having a computer because he has other people to use computers for him. So so it is good sometimes if even the highest level people to get basic information so that they can just understand the basic of what's going on. They don't have to be necessarily an expert in every single area, but it's great for them to want to be in the room and and expand that that level of hospitality uh, knowledge. Mm -hmm. So we have to speak to that. It's a really good idea. I know that, you know, Holly and I teach the Hotel Digital Marketing Essentials class, and we have everybody in there from every discipline, starting from a coordinator level, level to senior vice presidents and asset managers. Um, so we definitely have to sort of, like as Dean was saying, hit everybody, right? So we always tell them, hey, we're gonna start with the base here. And we try to make it interesting and funny and, and all that, but we're gonna start with the basics here, right? This is what a this is what, you know, PPC is. This is how a certain, you know, this is how Google makes money, right? Just the really basic stuff. I know when I started doing digital marketing presentations to hotels, um, the first thing I would do is explain how Google makes money. And at the time the GMs didn't know that if they clicked on a paid ad, that that's from our budget, right? And, and it's still something I teach, right? Uh, and mention to people because they, they just don't know. And and it's, you know, we, and it's, it's a topic that comes up often uh, on the show and, and in the industry is we tend to be very siloed, right? As, a, as an industry. And you're gonna be talking to an asset manager who knows how to run an asset left and right, but he doesn't understand digital marketing, right? Guy's a genius or the gal's a genius, but they don't know that. So, you know, you, you right. can't, you know, as Adele was saying, you can't assume that they understand that and you just have to do it in a way that that is helpful and and and, and not, uh, you know, doesn't put them down or make them feel bad that they don't know it. It's just, you, they just yeah. don't know it. It's not that they, they're not good at what they do. I I, uh, I actually, uh, I don't know whether you all remember a movie that wasn't all that successful, but it, I used it as a reference called 50 Dates. It had Adam Sandler and uh, well, Hawaii Classic. The Hawaii Classic. Come on, man. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> anyway, I I used that as a reference to one of my clients because what I did do was I recorded my last re 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 training on the data uh, studio uh, report that we made for him because every month. Uh, came the perennial call. Hey, Lauren, listen, can we get together and can you, I know I've asked you before, but can you show me how to read this data studio report again? Because it was an aggregate of their, all their properties. Okay. Well, after about the fourth month, I recorded the last one and just video and everything. Here it is, you know, and I literally started, was like, you know, hey, X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. We're going to go over and go over how to read the studio. And I recorded. So he asked me again, hey, Lauren, I know, but you know, this just isn't sticking in my head. It's like, no problem. Here's the link. What? of our last time I told you this. I said, it's like 50 dates. Everything was great the one day, but the next day it gets reset. This is what we're doing this for is because it does, it, because they're hit, they're, they're, that's not their interest. That's not their thing. It's important to them. It's information they need, but it's not like sticking in their head like, oh, I want to, but then by the same token to give them the same credit, when it becomes important for them, they really get their burrowing in and trying to understand how exactly it works because they have to explain it to others as well. We don't always get to be in front of everybody that they talk to about the same information. So it helps us help them to have that kind of detail to it. And yeah, to be honest, Dan, I've told people, it's like, look, if you, if this is a struggle for you, it's because you don't understand how all the pieces to the puzzle fit together for the picture. There's training tools like what you and Holly are doing. I would recommend you go do it. 
you can certainly have me train you, but the price price is not the same price thing, okay? My time spent versus the time where you can just get into and do the same thing is much more valuable for you just to go take the class, do it, and learn what it is that those things are, so. Well, I think the challenge too, uh, Lauren, you think of that owner and they're doing, I, I, or even, you know, the, the sales manager or the director of sales or the GM, they've got a million other things. And maybe they're looking at that data studio report once a month, right? right. I don't necessarily remember. So that comes down to having a system in place and whether it's Lauren Rui sending me the link with the video, <laughs> but a system of my processes and my steps so that I can find that information when I need it. Uh, mm -hmm. more so than anything else, right? I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I, I like, again, I feel like my brain has gone to, between COVID and now this move and, you know, it's like, where, where, where's the things in the house? Uh, but I'm constantly like, our, our director of sales ops, I, I swear she's in my right arm, but she hates me some days. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I know I should know where this report is. And say, but can you send me the link? <laughs> like, oh, I yeah. know you've given this to me 50 times, but could you give it That's, to me 51? <laughs> yeah. I mean, no matter what we set up for shared folders and pla project platforms and stuff, it literally blows. Just resend me the link. Yep. You got it. I, mean, I even don't even ask. It's now yeah. anymore when they go over and start bringing up the same questions. Like, look, I'm resending you the link right now. That's Rather than you saying, oh, go ahead, Dean. Well, that's right. That's why I like some of the things that Carrie was talking about too, actually, with, with their data, number one, being able to present baseline information. So what is a baseline for this? If I'm starting to talk about conversion rates, click-through rates, and all these different things, okay, it's great that I have a number, but what do I compare that to? Is that good? Is that bad? Is that neutral? You don't know. And how is it trending is the next question. But the things that a lot of digital marketers forget to do is to tell you the story of that data. So here's this data, but what does this mean? What is this telling me? Uh, wh what can I glean from that and what actions can I take? And we have to make sure that we tell that story. That One that I've been talking about a lot lately is click-through rates. Click-through rates from what I've seen are all on the rise. They're all increasing. And that's a sign to me that people are going from that, oh, I'm just browsing around, looking around stage to, hey, you know, now I'm actually thinking about doing something stage, right? So that's from my prospecting to my middle of the road driving intent funnel and getting down, getting that further down the funnel. So what does this data tell us? And we have to be able to speak to that. To that hey, end, I sorry, just want to say- break in. I, ha I have to leave. I just want to say goodbye. Oh, Dan, everybody. sorry. Was, okay. um, so apologies, I got to uh, hop on a call now. But um, uh, I hope to be back before the 400th episode. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for hey, having I'm me. And continuing to send that. me the link, even though I could rarely I join. Send Thank you, the you link, for that. Dude. I never worry about that. And do you have plans on coming stateside to uh, in September? Or are you going to be able to make it to Dallas? or anything I like will that? definitely be in Dallas. That is the plan. Awesome. That's why I'm, I'm trying to hope that's kind of like my big conference -y goal of happiness is to think that we're all going to try to make it in doubt. I doubt I'll go to any sessions. I'll just be doing group hugs all day. Just, yeah. you know, just, I, mean, <laughs> I don't know if I don't any think business so. will get done, but <laughs> yeah. All right. And I'm like, yeah, just going to gonna close my browser and not click that big. Yeah, don't click the big glowy button in the corner, please. Hey, Dan. Awesome to okay. see you. Hi, Dan. Hey, Dan. Right. Good to see you. Thank you. All right. Um, Oh, we didn't do the where they came. Where can they find Dan thing? We forgot. Oh, oh. crack. Um, I'll, I'll is his company. Cicido. Uh, I got to go look at his link real quick. It's I never Cicado. say it right it's, anyway. Sasado, Sasido, yeah. Sasado, and it means yeah. something too. It's not like just a funky it word. It's like it means something, and I can't, and and you know me and names and stuff. I, I keep getting remember. stuck on the Phil Collins song Susudio. Susudio, like, right? You know, because it has the double S. Yeah, it's yeah, but. Um, but, but I guess, okay, so you're talking about data and you're talking about putting it in. By the same token, I think there is this uh, necessity that uh, you want to make sure they stay informed through the process, that you don't frustrate them. Because at the time that you think you're the most clear, budget discussions, uh, requirements for funding, change in strategies, expansion of strategies or whatever, if you haven't kept them perpetually engaged, where you take the time, the extra time to keep going over the fundamentals with them, it's very frustrating when you're trying to present to them why they need to spend more money or do other things than they are, quote, familiar with. And you end up spending most of your time re-educating them on why you're even asking those questions. I've made that mistake where I have assumed they understood what we were doing as we were doing it. And then we came to a, a cross in the roads where it was like, I need to 
get them into this. I need to do this. I need to expand the budget. And I'm talking to them as if they understand why I'm asking this. And then it goes back to what is PPC? You know, like, oh, dang. Now, the whole purpose of our dialogue about budget changes and what have you is now lost in explaining what we're actually spending money on and then validating that and going forward. And by then you're running out of time, they're running out of patience and they have other things that they got. So it really does behoove you to, for me, especially I've learned that lesson firsthand of I'll take the time now, I'll be happy to go over. And yes, it's the same retread and the retread and the retread, but I better do it now so that when I do have to have those conversations in the future tense, I don't have to go back and go, oh, PPC is this and that's what we do it for. And this is why we're asking for this and what have you. So it is important in that sense. Well, and the other thing, (laughs) but if you as a a hotelier are working with a technology vendor to do whatever it may be, find somebody that loves to talk about this stuff. Because if they don't love to talk about it, they may not be the right partner for you. That's you know one thing that I think all of us can say with our specialties. We love to talk about it, and I'll talk about it again and again and again anytime you want to. I've never <laughs> had people bored with my conversation. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's funny when you go, Dan, in comparison, it's kind of like the two polarities. Dan, as you pointed out, Tammy, aggregates his information in a way that makes a really neat presentation and to what he says of himself. He doesn't tend to be that frequency issue. Oh my God, it's Mexico Ooh. City calling in. Holy jeez. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys. Hey, you hey, missed really? everybody else. Everybody else uh, uh, told me you're coming and they said, oh, gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> I just barely made it, but I'm glad I could be here for a little no, while. It's, I'm so glad. You, I'm, I'm enjoying your pictures, uh, enviously looking at you enjoying Mexico City. Trying not to make negative comments about your pictures, just smiley faces and happy thumbs up. Like, yay, good for you. Hey, how's the travel there? COVID and quarantines, anything? How is it? No, it's great. There's no, there's very, very few restrictions. Definitely you have to mask up in public everywhere. Um, but other than that, people are really just kind of going about their lives here. So um, beautiful city, by the way. If you've never been to Mexico City, great. I highly recommend it. Uh, I thought it was way more just business, but there's just a lot of culture and a lot of great things mm. to do here. So um, it was a relatively easy travel. I got my both my vaccines done before I came here. And um, so I'll be here for a month. A oh, month. Oh, so nice. I thought it was a couple of weeks, a month. Yep. What kind of company are you running over there that the uh, you get to go down to Mexico City for a month? Good golly. What is it? Lottery? Well, the great what? thing is that we were like remote first before COVID. So not much changed for us, really. So it's uh, the only thing that's made it very interesting and hence a slightly different picture today than usual is that uh, as soon as I got here, pretty much my laptop battery decided to swell so oh, I can't use no. my laptop at all. So I've been working completely on my phone. Um, but yeah. Now so you're going to get exciting. a laptop shipped down to you? Or are you going to buy local? I mean, what are you, you going to do? For I'm that? just having a battery shipped down um, okay. so that I can replace that. Hopefully that will take care of the issue because it. I think it didn't swell too much to uh, damage the case. But yeah, so I'm a little slow getting back to people right now on things because uh, my phone... Really hard to do an Excel spreadsheet on your phone, by the way. Um, now, that being said, on a tablet, I've come to really enjoy spreadsheets because you can do pinch and swipe and stuff, and it makes it a little – I mean, actually, on I actually enjoy a tablet easier. Oh, you know what you should do? You should buy VR goggles. Just go into the whole <laughs> Norby book thing. I'm just saying. <laughs> You're always trying to pitch me on these VR goggles, Lauren, one way or another. You're just I know, right? I'm to I'm like the VR there. spokesperson. It's like – VR goggles are good for you. I, I, prefer, I prefer AR, though. Yes. Well, actually, Actual it's getting reality. to that, too. They, they, they are adapting the goggles now to be a combo That's where true. you can see your real-world environment and put screens in front of you in your real-world oh, yeah, environment. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, it's... Yep. Augmented reality. Yeah. yeah uh, Lily, stuff. why at Mexico City? Uh, so it's City? just... Yeah, it's just actually a... Uh, an opportunity that popped up. I've been wanting to do it for a long time. So I'm down here with a program called Remote Year, which is specifically for remote workers. So there's 43 other remote workers on this trip with me. And we have uh, shared apartments, but private rooms. So the company takes care of all the logistics. All we have to do is get ourselves down here and pay for our own food, um, which is by the way, uh, very easy to do in Mexico City. 
exchange rate is right down here. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they, they arranged the apartments. There's a co-working space. I decided not to work there because last time I was there, I got a little too excited on a call and uh, got shushed. So I figured this was not the call to do at the co-working Wait a minute. space. Lily Since Martin we're always excited. Shushed? I know, they I know. You? They, they <laughs> shushed me. They, they, they must not know who I am. <laughs> <in> the-, <laughs> <laughs> the universal language, English, Spanish. <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. Now, are you going to get the chance to travel outside the city? Because, I mean, it's such a huge city. I mean, people don't really yeah. realize how big that city is. Yeah, I think they said that there is uh, 22 million people in Mexico City, and that's not really including the outlying areas of the city. Yeah. That gets it more to like 25 million. Another fun fact I learned um, from our city manager who lives here is that uh, in Mexico, the country altogether, there's actually a significantly higher number of U.S. citizens who immigrate to Mexico than Mexicans who immigrate to the U.S. So they think it's really, really funny that we want to close our borders. That's um, good. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, they find That's that good. really interesting. Well, uh, I mean, also, not to get political about this, but a lot of people that are trying to come to the U.S. are not Mexican citizens, to your point. No. They are they're yeah. more Central American, beyond Mexico, right. Guatemala, yeah. Honduras. Those are the people that are really the influx as they pass through Mexico to get there. It's just Mexico's the border. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. It, so, yeah, we're uh, definitely getting lots of activities. So uh, I know this is not specifically hospitality marketing related, but it is travel. So close enough. It's um, close but if enough anybody is. I'm if anybody is super you. interested in like following my adventures, I'm posting pretty much every day on Instagram. So. You guys oh. can always follow me there. It's just my first name and last name all together yeah. is my uh, handle there. So, I, I mean, interested. honestly, knowing you, you're going to make some sort of business model out of this for the ability to uh, from Mexican city travel, Mexico city travel. You know, it's uh, right. It's, you never, you never know. I'm always. It'll be another really LLC. <laughs> <laughs> Mexico City with Lily LLC. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's it's very tempting to just stay, guys. It is so easy just to to commute and live here. It's very safe. Um, we're in the Hipodromo Condesa neighborhood, which is kind of up and coming, a little bit hip. Um, so one of the safest places, uh, also near Roma Norte. So very cool place to be. Well, now just I know that Mexico City is for what you're doing right now, but it, it's interesting because right now, technically, you fall under the category of digital nomad. Correct. You know, and and that is, I don't think we as an industry are really focusing right now on the true dynamic change in the demographic shifts of where people are living. You know, I know, Tammy, you move for a variety of reasons, but you still moved within the same regionality and it's still close to your office and so forth. But there are a trend down here in Southwest Florida. Uh, it literally makes local news persistently that there are people that are coming down here to live simply because they can live here and still work. And so it's changing our economies quickly down here, not to mention house prices, which are absurd um, in the prices that are going up. But a lot of places you are like You want to talk absurd? Yeah, I know. You're in the absurd <laughs> land. I mean, you're actually, I think you're in the definition of absurd land, but, but your population is actually decreasing. Well, areas around you, San Jose, the population is not they're actually leaving because of the price that you have to pay to be there and then lack of necessity as much as they used to have. I don't think it's, I don't think it's going to be as totally dramatic, but you are losing population to some, you know, you're actually, you are the second or third largest decreased population by region uh, nationally right now. Um, I, you know, it was kind of weird. Some of the, the places were in Alabama. A lot of people left Alabama, hmm. uh, which hmm. I thought was kind of weird, but I mean, I guess, but I'm yeah, you're curious one. if you find that that have that link to whatever that article you're referencing. I'd I'd be curious if you yeah yeah I just, it. I came, actually it was one of the Facebook ones where it, it showed the top ten decreased mar- uh, regions in the U.S. from population due to COVID relocation and San Jose market uh, that the whole area there was listed as the number three I think. Uh, yeah, they talking about a lot of people from from the Bay Area because they don't have to work at these uh, corporate companies are going to like Tahoe or Oregon or like I have a friend that's in Tucson right now because she's staying with family because she got tired of being in an apartment by herself during mm. the pandemic and 
uh, you know, it, it works for, it worked for her. So she's, you know, she's staying down in Tucson and trying to figure out, and she, she actually was thinking about becoming a, a digital nomad and, mm. you know, going around the country and just kind of enjoying herself. So, and I think you're going to see more of that, especially with some of the younger population, right? I mean, I, I, I couldn't move far. My, my kid's about to graduate in three weeks. So, I mean, I guess we could have waited and, but she's going to college locally. And so the idea was we're not leaving just yet, but eventually, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we do plan on at some I point mean, in life. Yeah. Being I mean, we're basically, to leave. Yeah. We're facing the same choices. I mean, we were in the housing market until the housing market went absurd. And and now it's hard for us that we're familiar with this market locally because we've always had a place down here that houses that used to be for 250000 are now 450 And that is not an exaggeration. Right. And they're the same exact house with no physical changes to it that are being sold for $200,000 or more than what we saw them for not that long ago, year, year and a half-ish maybe. So the fact that, like, Lily, thank you for being back because we were talking about you. Oh, we said all good stuff. Though. It was all good. It was all good. <laughs> you know, it's... I have more challenges on my phone. I literally was just trying to drop my Instagram in the chat and hit the back button, which took me completely out of everything. So I lesson learned. No, nope, it's all good. I've actually tried to get better on my phone too. But besides from that, you're in a unique position. You represent, as, as Tim was pointing out, a unique segment. The ability to do what you're doing because of your lifestyle and it, it, it demographics about what you do. And the fact that you're taking advantage of it because – there's right. a lot of dreamers. There's a lot of, boy, wouldn't it be great if we could go to Bali and just get on the internet and hang out and spend a month there. There's a reality to it too, which you're living right now, which is, okay, it's neat that we're in Mexico City and it's neat that it's been organized the way it has, but there's certain hardcore realities. Your battery swelled up on a laptop. Do you buy local? Is there a shop you can trust? Is Where are you going to get it? How fast does it get delivered? Does it get delivered correctly? How much is it going to cost? There's certain functions of life that begin to come into play. Um, and where am I going to get mini screwdrivers to open the back of my laptop? Ooh, that is a good one. The mini Just so happens somebody else here brought some, weirdly enough. So I am well, off the hook. But I did find a hardware store today. So I, that could have worked too. Wow. First off, I don't even know what the barter value of that would be, but it'd be pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> so you have the hexagon screwdriver for the back of an Apple Mac Pro 13-year-old. Okay, well now. <laughs> How much is that going to cost me? <laughs> but yeah, the, the idea of the shift of the demograph the demographics, I guess, is what I'm saying is because First off, there's already a strata of people that have the luxury of doing that. Adele, you have the wonderful mm -hmm. luxury of having relocated what you did. Uh, Dean, you're stuck. T too bad. No, 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 no. I, I moved here. I did this way before COVID, actually. So yeah, you were you were pretty cool before it was yeah, cool. You I'm an Aquarius. Cool. As the Aquarian thinks, so shall the world think in 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> Dean was cool remote before it was even yeah. cool to be remote. <laughs> yeah. But but you know, there are those that have our frontline positions. It's funny because again, I think the benefit, and like I was pointing out earlier, the difference between what Dan and I do, Dan accumulates his data and then presents. I tend to talk to all the time, duh. And so I'm always on the the clubhouse and this and stuff. And so you get a, a pulse of what's going on. Uh, I don't make articles like you're saying, you know, like you said, Tammy, it's like I, I curate content and I don't share content. I don't think it's worth curating, but but I don't necessarily always produce it, self-produce. I mean, Lily, you produce a lot of great stuff. Uh, and, and and I'd like, you know, it's like, look, Lily said this and, I, you know, I know that it's good stuff. Just like when when uh, Robert shares quality, like it was a newsletter and stuff. I like sharing that stuff because it's good stuff. I love the articles he puts together for the reasons he puts them together, you know, for those reasons. But. For me, I feel good about the fact that I can tell you what people are thinking now because frick, I'm broadcasting seven, nine hours a week now on stuff while doing what I'm doing. Because with, with the clubhouse, clubhouse stuff, yeah, yeah, you you're, you get people come in and they're like they, we were pointing out earlier in talking conversation. There are some brilliant perspectives. People that are running a hundred hotels and they share their labor issue. Didn't think of it that way or whatever have you, and. From that, what we're talking about, this shift in economies and shift in demographics, we're talking about a segmentation. I mean, not everybody has this luxury of what we're doing in some ways, but those that do, it make an impact. Then there's the line labor issues of people that we just can't get to come back to work for our industry for all the reasons we've been talking about for weeks now in variety of dialogues as to how we treated them 
what we're willing to compensate them for, what we're asking them to do, and the limitations of what they're, they, they, the monies that they have in their pocket right now. Um, we know it's a possible temporary thing as to what we say is the financial influences, but the reality is we already had the issue, as, as I think Stuart pointed out may, a couple of shows ago, already before COVID started. We're already having issues of giving quality people to work in positions and roles. And we're changing the scope of that even now. And people have been exposed to working at Amazon for 15 bucks an hour, getting 401 the day they started and getting all these other benefits. Yeah, it comes at a price. But, and Lily, you experienced your ups and downs when it came through it as to what your variations, what you were doing, you know? And it does give you alternate perspectives of like, do I want to do this or do I want to do that? And it is different. It is different. Sorry, I'm just keep going on. Say something. It's always good. It's always good. <laughs> no, I think I think you're right. You know, really out of all of what's happened with COVID and, you know, obviously we were heavily impacted, right? I think that this time last year, we dropped 95% in revenue um, for our company, like off a cliff. And so obviously the government funding was helpful for us and things like that, but it gave us really a chance to relook at everything because in some ways we were almost rebuilding the business. And luckily we were able to do that with no impact to our ongoing clients that we mm -hmm. were able to keep them stable. In fact, like crazy amounts of growth that we've seen with our clients, even through COVID. So it's been great to really kind of put our skills to the test, put our team to the test. Like, are we really as good as we say that we are? I'm proud to say that we are. Um, <laughs> but really just like rethinking everything in our business model and our financial model. And I think that a lot of hoteliers and a lot of other small business owners have had that opportunity too. So hopefully people have, really taken advantage of that. Um, I know some of you know that I do business coaching on the side, not hospitality related necessarily, but coaching other entrepreneurs and whatnot about how to scale their businesses past that million dollar revenue mark and all of that. So in that, I've also seen a lot of opportunities through all sorts of different interests industries, whether it's, you know, Facebook marketing or selling pizza ovens online with drop shipping, like all these different types of things. So it's been really great just to see this from multiple perspectives. And I think that that's given me a better perspective as well on what's going on in the hospitality world and maybe some of the lessons that we can learn from outside the hospitality world mm -hmm. um, in order to move things forward. Mm -hmm. You know what, Lily, though? I'm wondering if the reason that I don't remember what the what the cutoff, what the break even point was, whether it was 50 percent or 55 percent or whatever it was. Now they're saying it's more like 30, 35 percent because they've changed the way their business model works. But they did it on the backs of the labor. And now we have this this and it's not just about employees not wanting to come back from unemployment but people actually who were there with us the whole time during the covid crisis working the extra hours yet getting less pay in a in a very stressful environment uh, totally exacerbated by some sort of a behavior problem on this and the on the part of the guests which i I really want people to write to me and tell me the details of those of those um, outbursts of bad behavior because I can't help wondering if I knew about the details of what the actual complaints and irritations uh, were about that I might be able to find a, a way through powering through that and preparing our teams better to handle those situations. But people are, were so stressed that even the ones that had the job still left the industry. Mm -hmm. And, and it, so now, Oh, well, we're so clever. Now we, we know how to manage on 35% on the backs of other people who are not getting paid properly. Yeah. You know? yeah I think it's definitely going to be sort of a, a revolution of things because one of the things that we don't necessarily do really well in hospitality is it, talking about mental health, talking about self care, talking about all of these things that are, it's really becoming more mainstream elsewhere, right? I see it on my entrepreneur side of my life, but I don't see as many people in hospitality talking about it, although it's slowly starting to make its way in. 
shocker, we're behind a couple of years, like we always are, I feel like. Um, but I think that that's really important. And I think that the companies that will thrive are the ones that are going to kind of incentivize their employees, maybe teach them about that. Maybe like in a staff meeting, you do a little bit of breath work, or you offer, you know, a, a yoga class in a meeting room, or something like that, you know, every so often, just to help people really manage and balance that stress. Because on the one hand, right, they're, they're not getting paid enough. So we're, we're in this weird crunch where we don't have enough staff. And then you see these things online, they're like, well, if you just paid them a living wage, and I'm like, yes, but a hotel has a lot of people. So to just bring everything up, and okay, I just now have to raise my rates 200% to break even, is also not sustainable if you don't make any revenue, because your competition is not doing it. And so there's a real fine line, financially, that you have to walk, everybody would love to pay their people, you know, $20 an hour in housekeeping, but it's not realistic without creating inflation on the guest side of things. So navigating that part of what you can do is look for those low cost or no cost opportunities to make your employees feel valued, to make them feel like you care about them as a whole person and not just what they can show up and do. And Adele, I know you talk about this stuff all the time. So I'm like mm. preaching your side <laughs> of things right now. Um, but I really think yeah. like, even in my business coaching, you know, people will come into those calls really stressed and I'm like, okay, hold on. We're going to do some box breathing in for four, hold for four, out for four, hold for four. And we repeat that about six times. And I just make them stop and do that. And like the stress level drops 70% just by doing that for like a minute. So if we were paying more attention to those things and really taking um, what we affectionately call power pauses throughout the day and encouraging our staff to do the same, it doesn't have to take a lot of time and it can make a huge difference in the quality of the work environment for everybody involved, both management and staff. It's funny, this echoes a lot of how we talk on a weekly basis because this is a, even though we may start with a conversation about something totally different. We end up talking about this thing going into this direction with it on a regular basis because you are talking about every evolution of what needs to happen. Uh, not to be political about this, but we need to get off of the CEO 300 times over being paid compared to their average employee. Because you talk about profitability, there's, there's some business shifts that have to occur. And, and companies will say, well, I can't get the best talent to run my company if I'm going to pay them lesser than my competitors are willing to pay them. And 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 I, I go to Adele's perspective on this in a lot of ways. You're going to get people that want to work with you because of the culture you have, not because of the compensation you provide. Uh, what, if anything, has happened in this past year to benefit the Adele cause <laughs> is the belief that when people are going back now, no, I'm not going to miss my daughter's recital. I'm sorry, because our industry is based on the culture of tough boys club. Oh, well, I can't pause because you won't pause. I won't blink because you won't blink. Here's my scar from that. Well, this is my scar from this. We have this one upsmanship. And if I pause, it's like a shark in the water. Oh, that means you're going to take something from me because I gave something up because I wasn't there 24 seven. I worked 80 hours this week. I don't know how many. And I think Tammy for me rant about this as well. I call a GM that has no time for me because they got to tell me how they're busting their butt 80 to hundred hours that week. And they're pulling front desk shift, housekeeping shifts, engineering shifts, how, you know, laundry room shifts, food shifts. And I'm sitting there going, you do know you work for a company that should you pass away, they're going to come to your funeral miss you and then find out who's going to re replace you. That's their life cycle. Their business is their business. It's not your life they're worried about. So the more you give and, and not you're getting back, and if that company only values that, wrong company. If that's what, and, 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 you know, so we all have to realize that somebody in this, this, this standoff has to blink. We have to reduce what we're paying top heavy costs for top heavy management. We have to compensate the people that are doing the workload. We have to balance their values to us. It may mean we have to hire more people so that the diversity of the demand is down. We're not asking 10, 12, 14 hour days, five days a week as an earned stripe that says, well, when you can finally have said that you've done this, 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 and this, I'll listen to you. No, there's talented people that don't necessarily have the years of experience that validates their opinion. Their opinion is brilliant. 
I, I, I told you this before. I loved hiring people that weren't from the industry because they saw it the way customers saw it. You don't need to have five years in the industry to have an opinion about what the industry is doing. You have to just know what the, 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 you, know, you, you enjoy it as a customer. So these are shifts that you're talking about, Lily, where pausing, we're, we're so concerned about shoving how much can you get done in a day we go into a meeting waiting to know what the next meeting is. We're not even paying attention to the meeting we're in because we're worried about the next meeting we're in and what we're involved with depends upon our interest level. Like, am I having to talk at this thing? Good. I'm good. I'm going to be working on my next meeting. We're you just, know, go ahead. Dan. I'm done. Sorry. 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 I interrupted you. Go ahead. Finish. No, no, you're fine. No. I, I need the interruption. Yeah. Productivity. I mean, this, this, this dream of how much can I accomplish in a day uh, has people waking up at three or four o'clock in the morning uh, so that because that's the only time that they can fit the gym in or something mm -hmm. like that. It's it's so crazy. And I remember saying to my husband probably several times, you know, I would volunteer to take less money if I could, you know, take one day, have a four day work week. And he goes, what, it, what it, was it? It doesn't matter to you. You work before you go to the office, you work when you get home from the office, you work on the weekend, it, when you work on vacation, you're always on. How How is having one day off going to make any difference? But it would, I'm sure that it would. Well, guess what? Here, I'm not even in the office <laughs> anymore and I'm still kind of this way. I, I, mm -hmm. I am this way, but I don't have that tension and that pressure. Mm -hmm. You know, the one thing that is just the main thing I want people to understand, I wish everyone would understand, is that if you're focused as a team on one vision, all in alignment, going in the same direction, and everybody is being appreciated for how they're being, uh, how they're, their tasks, their their um, role impacts. Uh, <laughs> by Tammy, how their role impacts that that success of the company as a whole. That they're appreciated and respected, and they're 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 being developed, and they're creatively expressed, and their opinion matters. Those those things help the bottom line of the company, the successful results of the company, and helps the employee spirit and the guest experience all at the same time. Mm -hmm. the, ho the hotel owners win, the management wins, the employees win, the guests win, everybody wins. But for some reason, nobody has time. Yeah. I told the same GM that having that's like, listen, dude, Take the advice of somebody that sat exactly in your chair, saying exactly what you're saying to me that I used to say to people that I had to take to, like, hey, I don't have time for this or whatever, or look at all the work that I'm doing. I, I, age is a beautiful thing. I get to say, nobody cares. Honestly, <laughs> nobody cares. I love talking to people like Lily, where it's like, I don't have any advice for you. It's like, you're living what I think you should be doing. You get to go to Mexico City for a month. For me, you know what it is? I, get a, I had a client that insisted they want to talk to me at 8 a.m. I can't talk to you at 8 a.m. Why, are you busy every day? Yeah. I don't start work before 10. I'm sorry. I'll work until 8 at night if I have to or 9 or whatever. And, yes, the occasional time zone included, I might have to talk to somebody at 8 a.m. But my block of what I don't do doesn't start. Because you know what? I'm not a happy person before 10. I like my coffee. I like to relax. That's my start. That's my. That's what I do. And then other people is like, well, I need to talk to you on, on uh, whatever day. I, you know, I can't, well, what, I just, I'm not sharing you my personal life. I'm just telling you that's not available for me to talk to you. And and it's, it's really weird because when I first started using the word no, because I'm really a yes, it was pain. I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, it's right. like, it hurt. <laughs> and then after a while, it's like, you know, honestly, it probably doesn't make that much difference in your life or my life that that didn't schedule out for you. But it really would have made a difference for me that I had to rearrange everything that I would have to to make that happen for you. And it's better that we don't start like that, because if you know I'm going to talk to you at Saturday night because you send me an email Saturday night, then you're going to expect that I'm always going to be able to talk to you on a Saturday night. And I don't. Yeah. That just, you know, so I'm not trying to be like, I'm only this and I'm only this. I'm always flexible based on the priority, but also I also don't want you to think that I'm whatever you need. I'm there for you, you know, 24 seven. I'm there. Nope. That's not what I do. <laughs> you know, so it is important to, and, and it's hard to tell line employees that because when you're not as financially comfortable, 
there's pressure and there's stress. And you're not was willing to push back when it might mean the difference of income versus no income or lesser income. You know, line staff, line position. Hey, I need you to pull that Friday night. There will always be times where it isn't convenient. But the priority is not so much that that inconvenience happens once in a while, that you allow it to happen all the time, that it tend turns into a new baseline. We all have those discussions. If you do it, they're always going to expect it. Not if you lay the precursor down and says, look, I'll be happy to do this, but understand what do you, what, if I do this thing that you need me to do Friday night or whatever, I'm going to take Tuesday off or yeah. I can't do it, you know, every Friday. This is, I'll do it this time because you need me. I understand team is team. We're there for you, but it's not going to be like I'm always there Friday for you. You can always put me on a schedule. It's not going to work. And that's hard. And, go ahead. Setting boundaries, I think, is really like what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. And I was I was very lucky about three years ago to come across Jennifer Love, who is uh, she calls herself a money therapist, but she goes also a lot into like the personal emotional work and things like that. And I actually had her on my podcast at one point, but she really taught me because I used to be one of those people who is like comparing battle scars and working 80 hours a week and saying yes to everything and feeling guilty if I said no to like stupid little things that the other person didn't even really probably care about Never. that much, right? And so I've learned to prioritize myself and what matters to me because it turns out, and this is where a lot of our culture has it backwards. I'm not talking hospitality. I'm talking like humanity, right? In general, like we feel like we constantly have to put others first. Codependency is rampant in our society, especially in the US. And just the act of making yourself the number one priority actually overflows and allows other people then to benefit more from you. So mm -hmm. for example, um, I think Lauren, you might've mentioned this last week. Um, my mom is going through a terminal cancer diagnosis right now. And so my first reaction when I heard that was to say, okay, well, I guess I just have to move where you are so that I'm with you 24 seven to help with all of the end of life things. Well, it turns out, that that was a terrible idea because that wouldn't allow me to recharge, right? And so instead I needed to say, okay, where do I need to be so that I can be fully charged up so I can go down there frequently, right? So I, I still did Mexico City. I thought about canceling it because it was already on the books, but I was like, no, because I can always fly back. So even when it's something that important, like literally somebody very close to me and my family is dying, but I still chose myself first. And because of that, I'm able to be more present for her, more of I, an emotional support. And so it's so important. I, I think I want to clarify just something you said mm -hmm. uh, from my perspective. I don't think this is thinking of yourself first. Sorry. I, I still think you're being selfless about this because there's a not to go deep and philosophical and so forth and so on, and, but knowing friends and losing friends and so forth and being firsthand in this experience. Um, there are, tr there is a the pr progression of things that happen, an actual reality of timeline. Right now, there is not a physical need of, for you to be there. Okay. Mm -hmm. There is not a helping you out of, I, I mean, I say this from a first person experience in lots of ways of the physicality of need. Okay. Helping out of bed, helping get meals, helping do things. You're not needed for that right now. The value that you and all the family around your mom have right now, she knows she's loved. That emotion support is the most important thing. As time goes forward, the unfortunate reality of it is there will be more need of the physical. Right. You'll be ready for it at that point because you, and I said this to you when you first <laughs> told me this, have yet to internalize and, and you need to, you know, everybody has to go through a grief. And there's a there's an emotional grief that goes through. Uh, you're, you're very much like my wife in lots of ways. There's a, there's a functionality. Click, function. I got to do this, do this, do this. There's a practicality, but it's also a wall. There's a defense that that creates. I'm providing, I'm doing, I'm, I can't think about the feelings of it. I'm thinking about the practicalities of it. But when you let that practicality break away, there's that all that emotion there. And you got to go through that. And I'm not being counselor to this. I'm just saying that, you know, it kind of lends itself to our discussion with people and personalities. 
all of us in the decisions of how we change our modalities have to go through all aspects of it, the practical of it, the implications of logistics, of the reality of time consumption or commitments or workloads, and the emotion of it, the insecurity of, did I do the right thing? Did I make the right choice? Am I sacrificing because Bob over there is super freaking aggressive. And as soon as I back off for my daughter's ballerina class, he's going to jump in and go, hey, I'm here for you, boss. You know, because we have that that blink mentality of, you know, if it's not me, then you. And if I lose, you win that that, it, that, that polarity thing. And you get off that rat race and you realize it's just a rat race. It's a wheel because and I've said this in our dialogue about employee reviews. This annual review process is bogus BS. I busted my butt for 11 and a half months and I screwed up. And now my reviews at the day after I screwed up. Guess what's in the review? My screw up. Not the 11 and a half months where I gave up my daughter's recitals, ballerinas or whatever. You know, it's what's in the mind of the person at the time. And we really got a firsthand example of that from companies that we're a family company. We care about what you're doing. We believe we're all one culture, so forth. And you gave up those special moments with your family, those vacations you didn't take, the extra workload that kept you from your family. Where to get you? Hey, uh, we're really sorry, business, you know, not our fault, you're furloughed. Mm -hmm. Wow. Gee, that really was worth it for me. I, I gave up personal time. I gave up vacation time. I gave up family experiences. I didn't go to my mom's this or my dad's this. And I just got tossed out like a number on a book for a folio for a, for a price. That reality hit for a lot of people. And we're not as an industry addressing that on the reacquisition of those people. That's why we're having a hard time. You want me to come back to do the same thing at the same pr low price you're paying me when I already know what other people are offering and you want me to work the same way I was doing before, you know, do everything you need me to do whenever you need me to do it. And you're going to probably end up treating me the same way. Yeah, you know what? I think I'll pass. I think I'm going to go work at Amazon and pack a box or whatever. You know, that's what people are facing right now. And then and you get these people and I say this with indignancy towards them. We can't afford these people. Congratulations for announcing your paying below minimum, you know, sustainability. That's that's a good for you. You know, restaurants, they say, well, we'll have to raise prices to customers or pay yourself less and raise your prices and make it balanced out for everybody. Or, you know, there, yes, customers have to, I mean, you're willing to charge a COVID fee for your cleaning fees. Okay. You know, and you're okay with doing that to your customers. Why can't you charge a different price for the meal knowing you can pay your pay your people better and maybe take a little less of yourself? You're not worrying about 11 or 12% profit margins. Maybe go for four or 5%, just saying, you know, yeah. add that into your labor cost. There, until there's a willingness for that to have happen, we're going to have those issues. So uh, that was me and my soapbox again, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I think that that makes sense. And, and to a point that can be done. I mean, even in my company, recognizing that we needed to make sure that our customers weren't impacted and we needed to retain right the right level of talent um, that basically the entire executive committee including myself we didn't get paid for six months right I remember when right. you said we just that. I was like yeah wow, we just took like a zero dollar paycheck net paycheck so we maintained our benefits but outside of that um, and it, and the fact that that team was willing to do that, Right. Mm -hmm. That means a lot to me. That tells me that we have built the right culture. I mean, granted, also, they had personal financial situations that allowed them to do that. Not everybody can do that. And sure. there's no judgment there for those who can't volunteer. Right. But mm -hmm. at the same time, the, the level of commitment and the belief in this company that I've built, which, frankly, like I know I get to show up here every week and do all the fun PR stuff. But frankly, my team runs my company. Right. Like I'm not necessarily responsible at this point um, other than kind of indirectly for all of the amazing things that the company is doing. I just get to kind of sit back and watch how we can impact the industry in a really positive way. And that allows me to do these other things like business coaching, right? Where I mm -hmm. can then expand my personal influence and interests into other areas after the, you know, all the years where I worked 60 to 80 hours building the company. This is the other side of that. But really where I'm going with that to your point about the labor costs is sometimes it does take a little bit of personal sacrifice in order to get to where you need to be. Um, and again, you just have to balance it out 
with the financials. Personal, yeah, that's a personal, you know, I, I enjoy what I do. I drive my wife crazy. I don't read. I mean, if I'm not doing this stuff or doing client work, I'm learning about gadgets and gadgets and tools and tech. And I love this stuff. I mean, when we talk about, quote, retirement, it's like, I don't know what that means. It means maybe doing less of what I already like doing or more. I don't know. But that's the difference of loving what you do, which is, again, but something we've we've walked around, but it's true. You do what you love to do. That's why six or 80 hours doesn't make a difference because to me, the it, 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 same with you. It's like, I spend six or seven hours because I like doing this stuff. You know, right. I like doing all the other stuff, but I like this stuff. I, and, and because of that, that's different than those that do it because they only need the benefit of doing that work. They're not happy with what they're doing. And yes, there is an escalation. You have to work up to where you think you finally have that financial stability. But again, at the end of the day, if you address the quality of the person's life, it makes a big difference. Yeah. Well, we would. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, oh, hey, do before we forget, please put in the link for for your mom because we, we brought it up last week about your mom, with your permission, obviously, uh, to let people know what you were going in and, and, and so. But there was also your mom. You know, you have a, a GoFundMe, I think, right? I do. Yeah. Actually, the easiest way to get there is uh, just since I'm on my phone, so it's hard to grab the link. But if you go to my Instagram, which I dropped into the chat a minute ago, uh, the link is in my bio on Instagram. I'll, I'll share so it in the show notes as well way. like we did last week. I'll keep putting it in the Perfect. show notes. Thank you. And, so forth, and I also want to say, because I think some people go in there and become intimidated because we've had some really generous donations, which nice. I so appreciate. But honestly, it would mean a lot, even if like it's there's it's in volume, right? So mm -hmm. if you can only donate five or $10, that still means a lot to us because I know a lot of people are still recovering financially. So just want to throw that it's out also, there. Yeah, and that, that's also lends to why it's there because it, sincerely, nobody plans for this. Sorry, right. we talk about mortality every day and boy, when I get old and this is that, and you know, when I get, when I'm ready to go, I hope I just drive in there all worn out, ready to leave this world. It's all fun talk until it's a reality, okay? Yeah. And, 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 and that makes the world a difference. And my parents are just those people, right, who have spent their lives so devoted to helping others that they really mm -hmm. didn't do anything to prepare themselves for something like this. And so now right. my mom is, you know, she's like, oh, my gosh, I have to work literally till the day I die. And then I don't know if if my dad's going to be OK after that, because I'm mm -hmm. the person who can make money right now. And so just that's the hardest part for me, I think, is seeing them under such financial stress, which is why I decided to uh, do mm -hmm. this for them. And we so appreciate the outpouring of love and, you know, not just the financial, but even the comments and the notes that we've received and the calls. Um, it's been just overwhelming in a, in a positive way. It's so nice that's to know nice. that we're supported. Is, is she is, still is. working now? Is, is Julie still working now? Is she still feeling she well enough? So she... Yeah. She, she would like, she is open to work. Yes, I, I, she actually I, likes work. Um, she wants to continue working as long as she can because it also kind of gives her some purpose, right? She's mm -hmm. she's grappling, of course, with this idea of, well, you know, occasionally what's the point? Um, when you see that end in sight, there's a lot of psychology that you have to mm -hmm. overcome. And so, um, so she's on some reduced hours, but she's definitely um, still working and, and happy to do that. Yeah. I have a lot of retired friends here, obviously. And that is probably one of the things that you have to reassess when you decide to retire is what is my intent? What is my purpose? What is it that I do? And, and, and fortunately, we have wonderful friends down here that we get to see a diversity of how they've translated that question. Your mom, you know, is looking at it in a very, very, very accelerated perspective of what is between now and then really mean. And yes, the distraction of work may be there, but I hope truly in my heart of hearts that she enjoys the warmth of knowing that she made an uh, impact on so many people and that yeah. she uh, had, uh, um, yeah, that, that there was more to it than just what she accomplished by some measurement of a spread chart or finances that there was a more of a, a value to life in that sense. So yes. And I do hope that people do take advantage of the, the link and so forth, because it is one of those things where it is a distraction where you're worried about the impact on others' lives, even though you're not there to continue on with it. What happens to them is as important as to what happens to yourself. And this mm -hmm. is something that helps with that. So with all of that, wow, we can, okay. But Hey, listen, thanks for joining us from Mexico city, Adele, Adele, Dean, obviously always, uh, but, um, Lily, if people want to know about you and your 1,800 companies, no, how many companies <laughs> you know? I mean, I, I know you had nine, right? Nine? 
<laughs> no, technically only two companies formed under my name. My business coaching I do for other companies. So oh. I'll try to give you the quick list. Uh, so the core company is Total Customized Revenue Management, which you can find at tcrmservices.com, all things revenue management related. And then also the sister company is Think Up Enterprises, which is at thinkupenterprises.com. If you throw in a forward slash in the word podcast, you always get to the Hospitality Revenue Management podcast where there's some great content on there uh, as well. And I think we're we're a little over 30 episodes now on that. So that was- What is our podcast going up there? It should be up um, this week or next, I think, Dean. I think Julie hasn't sent it to me yet. I think, yeah, I think Julie still got sent to me. She mentioned to it. I was gonna tease Julie by saying I wasn't gonna do it, but I think she'd fly down here just to kick my ass. <laughs> yeah, she's not that far. She's not that I, I would totally She might actually be below you. Time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She just, just, yeah, I'd, I'd be scared, so I wouldn't do it. I just out of fear, I would just make sure it goes up as fast as possible. Can we watch in VR? Right. We can yeah, just... yeah, you know, right? <laughs> That'd be fun. Uh, yeah. How long? How long did it for finally to say TSCRM correctly? I think it took me like a half a year before I said that right. So you know, it takes a, a lot of people say like TCM, TRM. I don't know why, but it is TCRM. Um, but also, if you're just curious about the business coaching side, you can also check out the uh, heavily business side at 2x.co, which is about scaling um, entrepreneurial businesses. And then if you're more interested in the emotional side and some of those things, go to jenniferlove.com. And of course, you can go to my Instagram for non-work related fun travels in Mexico City. So I think that's all my links for I now. Told you, 17 companies. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Adele Gutman, for those who want to know where to find you and what it is you do, where is it that they can do that? Um, my, my specialty is helping hotel general managers and directors of sales and marketing get phenomenal reviews, climb to the top of charts on the review list, which will give you more exposure. And uh, you do it by organically improving the guest experience, which, by the way, improves the, uh, the guest experience uh, and the employee experience and the financial experience all at the same time. So that is that is what I love to do. And uh, I would say I have a knack for it at this point. So uh, please follow me at AdeleGutman.com. And from there, you can see uh, links to uh, video or audio for the Hospitality Reputation Marketing Podcast. Uh, we don't just make up advice. We give advice from actual experience of being in the one of the number one hotel in your city, uh, country, or or region, or even the world. We had a number one hotel in the world on TripAdvisor for 2017. So, it these these this advice and this philosophy really works. And I interview uh, GMs and uh, other experts who have made it to the top of their country, their region, or or the world as well. So you can see that there is a universal wisdom that is behind everybody. It's 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 almost the same. Any general manager you talk to that's made it to the top did it pretty much the same way. So it's it always works. So I hope you'll join. Uh, and uh, and follow the Hospitality Reputation Marketing Podcast. Mr. Dean, other than being, what, are you a scoutmaster? Is that what you do? You do your troop or? or? I'm not the scoutmaster. I'm one of the, the parent leaders. I, I take myself just far enough so that I don't have to be too responsible. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, the kids can run rampant. When they're around me, I say, yeah, go ahead and climb that tree. <laughs> Whereas when they're around the scoutmaster, he has to tell them no. <laughs> ah, so you're the good guy yeah. out of the mom and dad relationship on the scout side. Okay, just want to make yeah. sure it was clear on the most okay. recently though, most the most current thing that I'm doing though is I'm also my son's baseball coach. Uh oh. so we've got the little league baseball going on. So we're starting that up. Oh, you get yeah, to talk to Ed. Ed is uh, now the basketball coach for his daughter's team. And and oh. knowing in Ed's style, Ed's defense, as he likes to say it, is crushing their competition. So already the Ed ego is in the process <laughs> of his daughter's basketball strategy. Just so, you know, if you guys want to swap notes, it's all good. Not same school sport, but, you know, just that angle. Um, if they do want to know more about what you do for a profession, however, <laughs> where can they find you? Here's that. Yeah. So all things MetaSearch and MetaSearch related. Uh, so MetaSearch and things like sponsored placements, Google, Google promoted properties, all those things that are tied in there. Uh, if you want to learn about it, 
basecampmeta.com, finding your way. If you need somebody to do it for you, metasearchmarketing.com, plugging you in, we can help on both sides of that equation. Uh, find me on LinkedIn, Dean Schmidt. Cool. For show notes for this show, which is show number 300, and it, the, probably one of our longer ones, uh, you can go to hospitalitydigitalmarketing.com forward slash live, look for it, and all the show notes, including the links we're talking about, like with the ones we talked about with Lily and her mom, and all the other ones from our guest hosts that we had earlier on with Gary, all of that cool stuff. We also have our podcast, which is in collaboration with everybody else. Uh, so we have a series of ones. Um, and also, too, we do the um, uh, Clubhouse. Sorry, Clubhouse from uh, Monday through Thursday at noon uh, Eastern time. If you want to join, it's a fun dialogue. It's a lot like this without talking heads and a, a lot of very variations of people to join in. So with that, thank you, everyone, for time. Lumi, please stay safe and have a tremendous amount of fun uh, with everything. And I hope that you can join us on occasion during your stay down there, but totally understand if you can't. Um, Dean and Dell, thank you always for the time that's been spent. And for everyone You're else. You're going to make me get on Instagram. I've been trying to avoid it at all costs, but now I have to. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty, I'm the pretty into it myself. Yeah. I did feel bad that the first picture you shared, unfortunately, was the tragedy that happened in Mexico City. Well, that was one of your first ones. That was sad. And just there's some lots yeah. of levels of conversations about that. But yeah, but the other stuff in your food, which I'm fascinated with, by the way, I love when you show the food because to me, it's like, what's she eating? What's she, uh, can I make it? <laughs> So please keep sharing because it's been enjoyable to see all of it. And and by all means, thank you everyone that joined us on all the platforms. We'll see everyone next Friday or Monday, depending on what platform you want to catch us on or podcast, whatever. So bye everybody. And thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.